things ever going to happen to them, but they don't understand the repercussions that it has on the people who uh, are, are bystanders and, and see this happen and, and to try to uh, uh, save someone's life. And, uh, you know, accidents happen in seconds, not a split, se a split second. It could happen any time. And uh, so to behave in such a um, dangerous ma matter that can impact other people, uh, people are just not taking others into consideration when they act in this manner. So I am in, in agreement with you and I hope that we can put some kind of uh, citizens committee together to address this, especially with all of the four wheelers and the, the young kids that are out on our, our streets and not thinking about what might happen. So thank you for coming forward. I appreciate it. Thank you. Council member Ford. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, thank you, uh, Mr. Hollis, for uh, being in the meeting today and bringing this up. <clears throat> it is a problem, and we're starting to see crime of all sorts, not just speeding, um, get out of hand because there is no punishment anymore for the crime. And until we start holding people accountable for their actions, unfortunately, most of um, what we're talking about would happen at the state or county levels um, for that accountability. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we do have these high hazard zones and it was just not that long ago, uh, our officers stopped a person going over 120 miles an hour on Highway 2. So it's happening all over our community. I hear the, the um, street bikes going up and down uh, by my house on 112th as well. And yeah, I would love to, uh, to be able to get to the bottom of it, but a lot of it's going to be at a higher court than our municipal courts, and that would be state and county. But I would be glad to uh, support increasing some of the fines and jail time for some of the reckless endangerment that happens within our community. So thank you for uh, bringing this to our attention. Thank you, Ms. Hollis. I had a, Ms. Hollis had a, uh, had a conversation yesterday for quite some time about this. And um, I was gonna ask our city attorney, what exactly can council do as far as increasing the penalties for this type of situation? It's certainly something that we can talk about, Mayor, and, and look into. I do not have an answer no, that's on, on the record, so. All right, appreciate that. So they any other council members? Thank you, Mr. Hollis. Appreciate your time. Thank you guys so much. Um, definitely appreciate it. And if you guys do form a planning committee, I definitely would love to be a part of that. Thank you. I do not see the last virtual speaker in our uh, Zoom call. Okay. So we can move on to in-person speakers. Um, first, I have... I do remember the phone number from the registration. It's not that one. Um, the first per speaker we have is Devinder Sandhu. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Steve Douglas, and all city council. Uh, city manager, Mr. Jason Rogers, and all of the city staff. I'd like to thank you all for uh, supporting the development of 96 and Tower Road. Uh, we've had an enormous amount of challenges trying to get this project up and running. And uh, uh, all of you guys have worked very closely and uh, uh, trying, uh, helped me in trying to accomplish the goals for the city and me as a small business developer. Uh, there has been an uh, enormous amount of uh, change orders that have uh, been caused by the water department running all our subdivision lines from eight inches to 12 inches. Uh, and 
things are done to some standards and there are things that are needed versus there are things that are wanted by the water district just because they have a bigger hammer. And it puts a lot of pressure on the small developers in trying to get to the finish line, which have made things very hard on myself. Uh, there is a substantial amount of improvements that are gonna go on Tower Road, and which if we can get some help from the city would be very help, helpful to get to the finish line. Uh, and just wanted to mention that uh, the five businesses that are going to open in the next tw uh, 12 months that are in the pipeline, it's going to create almost 40 jobs for Commerce City. And it's going to generate north of $14 million in annual revenue for the city. Uh, it's not the first development that I, as a small business owner, have done. I have developed five businesses on 120th and Chambers and that are providing services to the local residents and generating income for the city. Again, I like to uh, thank you for all the help and support and uh, any help that I can get from the city in achieving my goals. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any council member 70 for speaker? Thank you. Thanks for coming. I'm happy to answer. And I, I do appreciate you let us know that your projects and how many you have in the pipeline and what you already have brought into the city. Very, very much appreciate that. Councilmember Douglas. Yes, I'd like to echo that as well. Thank you for um, being here in Commerce City and, and bringing in business and uh, commercial development. Uh, you have been an asset to the city and um, although we don't have jurisdiction over the water department, hopefully we can work with them so that they can move this along so that, that uh, we can show others that it is good to do business here in Commerce City. So thank you for coming forward and, and bringing this up. Thank you. Council Member Ford. Yes, thank, thanks for coming in tonight, Devender. Um, appreciate you coming forward. I know we've had multiple discussions and I've been trying to get the staff and, and thank you to the staff for working with Mr. Sandu on trying to alleviate some of his challenges. Um, we know we need development, especially in the Northern area and more services. And uh, I wanna let you know, we appreciate that. And I know our staff will do whatever they can um, to within their boundaries to, to help you get to that point. So um, just keep, uh, keep a positive mind and, and we'll continue to work with our staff to try to make sure that we get you to where you need to be so that we can start seeing um, the end results of your development and the benefit to our city. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, appreciate you. Thank you. Our next speaker we have is Austin Gonzalez. Hi there, uh, Austin Gonzalez. I've spoken with some of you about my issue already. Um, they're gonna start a new project on 62nd and Holly. I live at 62nd and Holly. Um, I'm all for the traffic project to cut down on the speeding in the area, because that's a huge issue over there. But I found out in the meeting Thursday that they plan on moving the bus stop on the northeast side of 62nd and Holly when they do this project closer to my house. Um, the bus stop is already a disaster over there for RTD anyway. Uh, they throw their trash all over the ground. The city says it's my problem to clean up the trash. RTD says it's my problem to clean up the trash. Um, so they put a trash can there. Now it's my responsibility to dump the trash for RTD, but I don't get paid by RTD. So I don't know how that's my responsibility. Um, if it's a problem right there with weeds or trash, the city says it's my problem. Now, if I wanted to do something with that little piece of property, the city would say that's their property because it's public easement. 
So something needs to be done about RTD. I don't want the bus stop there, period. I don't think any of you want a bus stop in front of your house. I don't want it in front of my house. They throw their needles out, they throw their garbage out, and it affects me directly. So if we can do something about this with RTD, that's great. Um, again, I'm, this bus stop isn't moving any closer to my house. I, I don't care what the project says. I'm letting you guys know it's not moving next to my drive and it's definitely not moving directly in front of my house. I'm not gonna have it. So whatever we gotta do to get this handled, I would appreciate whatever we can do. Thank you that, sorry, thank you very much. We had a conversation over the weekend as well. And I really concerned about the fact that that stopped not only there, but you had to pick up response for your trash. Yes, that was RTD's uh, solution was to put a trash can there. And then they dropped the garbage bags off at my house and said, you're responsible for that. The government says we can put this bus stop wherever we want, but we don't have to do anything with it. That's your problem because it's on your property. So if it's on my property, then I don't want it there. It can go away because it's my property. They've said it, the city says it, but yet the bus stop is still there because it's public easement. So technically it's not my property, right. but I'm responsible for it. Um, city manager, as I spoke to the gentleman, he had indicated that, uh, was it uh, not, not public works, um, neighborhood services was gonna issue him a ticket because there was trash Oh yeah, so uh, code enforcement. Uh, code enforcement was also making him take care of the trash that was not part of his property as well. So I'm not sure if we can, you know, as far as looking into that to see exactly what's going on. And if we could talk to uh, Public Works and work with RTD, somehow move that, about that bus stop moving north. Uh, so thank you for that, Mayor. Um, Mr. Gonzalez and I had a conversation on Friday as well. I appreciate being able to have that touch point. Um, our staff is already working on a, a, another, a number of items, particularly with RTD in and around the bus stop locations, an assessment of where there may be some, some options for relocation, but also just maintenance and upkeep of their general bus stops. And I would not just say this location, mm -hmm. but generally across the entire city, because okay. uh, there's probably multiple um, points of where we have this issue, they may just not necessarily be as well known as with what we're dealing with uh, with Mr. Gonzalez's property. So um, we're working towards that, obviously, um, with where this project stands, and it's not going to be under construction until after the Memorial Day weekend. It gives us some time to be able to work through the issues with the property owner and property owners, as well as RTD on trying to find a solution. So yeah, um, the one suggestion is that they can move that bus stop near Holly Street in 63rd place. That'd probably be a better location. Because that way it wouldn't impact any, any residential inhabitants. Yeah. Definitely something we'll talk about with RTD, yeah. given it is their stop, right? Uh, any, I would say, relocation of that, we probably want to have their blessing and or removal of that prior to doing such. Um, no different with, with what they have authority over and what versus sure. what we do. Uh, so I think as we kind of go through um, this next process for the, uh, for the better part of a month, month and a half, uh, we'll make sure to stay engaged with Mr. Gonzalez and the rest of the neighborhood, um, as well as making sure to come back to council once we have a better idea of what uh, may be a solution uh, for this portion of the corridor. Okay, thank you. Council Member Kim. Mr. Rogers, I just want to make sure that we're clear here is the fact that if it, if what Mr. Gonzalez says is true, I'm not saying he's not saying he's, he's, he's not lying here. I'm just saying if code enforcement is going to be trying to come out there, it's going to try to go out there to issue him a ticket. I expect that we do not issue a ticket to that man as far, especially for that property. I know that sounds harsh as far as what I'm telling you right now, but it's not his responsibility. It's not. Uh, it's definitely it's definitely not his responsibility to pick up the trash at RTD with the bus stop there, in my opinion. Thank you, Council Member Ford. Yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> That's uh, exactly where I was going. Is unfortunately there's um, some lack of understanding of who's responsible for what, um, and I don't care if it's in front of. Mr. Gonzalez's house. I wouldn't want to bus stop in front of my house, especially if they're throwing their trash out. 
I wouldn't want it in front of any of my residents that live in Commerce City. I wouldn't want it, want it in front of their house. But at the end of the day, we have bus stops all over, all, all over the community. Um, I know the one by Walmart is constantly plagued with trash all over the ground. Um, Walmart, I'm assuming, is not getting uh, these violations from our code enforcement. And at some point, we need to hold the responsible party um, liable for taking care of the trash and, and dirtying up, especially private residences' properties. So um, whether we're talking about the bus stop in front of Mr. Gonzalez's house or not, um, I think anywhere within the city, if there's uh, buses and RTD is responsible, then let's make them responsible. If the city's responsible, then let's be responsible. But I can assure you that this man's not putting the trash out there and he should not be obligated to have to go pick up someone else's garbage that's being thrown in his yard. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to find out who's responsible so that um, when we have these conversations, that we know who the responsible party is and we can hold them accountable. That's all I got, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Douglas. Thank you, Mayor. I agree with my fellow council members here and uh, really appreciate you coming in tonight. Um, I hope that we can stay in communication and possibly some of us as council members can come and meet with you uh, at your residence to really take a look at uh, what's going on and sometimes just being in the area and, and looking at the situation, you can come up with, with solutions I really apologize for code enforcement uh, issuing you a citation uh, and especially for RTD uh, sounds uh, like uh, they're rather arrogant in uh, yes uh, that's in making asked you responsible and 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 that's uh, that's not good public service well so, I, I totally agree and I, I know Mr. Mayor drove by and seen it. Uh, Mr. Teeter has seen the stop and the trash cans right there, yet there's still trash all over the ground right next to the trash can. Right. So well hopefully we can we can get yeah. together and meet with you in person and and come up with a solution for this. So, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Next for in-person speakers, we have Mr. June Younger. Mayor and City Council, my name is June Younger. I live at 5409 East 61st Way in Commerce City, and I'm here tonight with two different hats. The first hat is uh, for the Chamber of Commerce. I would like to invite you, which um, you all should have been getting these on your city calendars because I send out all events to Annette Peters. Uh, but the first one is Meet City Council, uh, our after hours business mixer. We have done this ever since I started, which is five years now with the Chamber, and it's a great informal way for the community to meet with City Council. And I know there's a conflict of interest that night, but I hope some of you can come out to this one while others attend the other. Uh, the other thing is the Kentucky Derby and the Derby. We appreciate your sponsorship, and we invite you to come out on that first Saturday of May to Key Bank and just be part of it. Every year it gets bigger and better, and I hope that all of you, along with city staff, will come out to that. Um, second um, issue is I'm putting the hat on as a resident. And so I live in the town and country subdivision, which is between 60th and 62nd Avenues and Holly and Parkway Drive. I attended the city's neighborhood meeting about the intersection of Holly and 62nd Avenue last Thursday and was very disappointed. What I thought was a meeting to gather input from residents about how to improve the intersection was a meeting that basically told us all that attended was that everything had been decided, put to bid, contracted, and is, is expected to begin construction in just a few days. During the meeting, staff and those who 
were with them, confessed there were no other community input sessions, no traffic studies were done, especially during the peak traffic times, like at 4 p.m. when students are getting out of Kearney and parents are going westbound on 62nd um, and throughout the rush hour. We also found out that our fire district was not contacted for their opinion on how these concrete bumps would narrow down the intersection and how that would affect our firemen going to calls. We were all in agreement something has to be done at this intersection. However, I believe the solutions that the residents offered, like adding left turn lanes and changing the cycle of the lights, would be a, that would be a slight variation to what they have already at 64th Avenue, should be considered before you as council and us as a city spend thousands of taxpayers' money that will create more traffic backups than the intersection already has, especially if CDOT gets its way and makes 62nd Avenue a major thoroughfare by installing a traffic light at 62nd and Highway 2. May I continue? Can you just wrap it up? Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so I would suggest <laughs> that a traffic study be done. I hope that you would put the brakes on this whole project until a traffic study can be done and that it would include what types of accidents are truly happening at the intersection. If it's pedestrian versus auto, or is it more drivers trying to beat a car and turning left in front of oncoming traffic? Or is it someone who's not paying attention and rear ending someone else? So um, I would hope that you would consider all of this. Thank you. Well, thank you, appreciate that. Any council members have any? I have a question, city manager. Yep. Um, when was this put out? Was this something that was brought, brought to community last year? Because I know the, at this, what, 62nd and Highway 85, 86 portion that they're gonna do, CDOT, that was a project that was, what, from 2022? Yeah, so there's a long-standing history to this, uh, Mayor. This actually started as a community-initiated request to council back in 2021 in regards to the speeding and uh, ongoing traffic concerns with pedestrian and vehicular potential conflicts because of those speeding issues. Uh, so for the better course of a year or two, we went out and evaluated that intersection on what could be the appropriate improvements. And obviously, uh, we had seen some some traffic incidents occurred during that period, which escalated the timeliness of moving this forward because of uh, the general welfare and safety to the to the community. Uh, so I will agree with Ms. Younger that there was very limited community engagement, uh, but staff was moving to try to address what was a, a prevalent issue as we understood it and we're seeing uh, with that intersection. Uh, so in 2021 and 2022, a basic concept plan was prepared in which then was worked up uh, and then submitted and approved as part of our CIP budget, which then went out to bid uh, for design in 2023. And uh, ultimately uh, another bid for construction uh, that was the, the begin on April 22nd. Once again, that has since been uh, delayed. Uh, and I will uh, accept that there was probably some opportunities for us to engage with the community to uh, share with them the design uh, during that phase of the project in 2023. Um, but having spoken with staff, there are some modifications that we can do, not necessarily significant ones, um, because there's a limited right of way. Um, any additional improvements such as let lanes would probably require acquisition of right of way. So private property, because uh, it's a very tight intersection there as we have it. Uh, so trying to work within the bounds of the right of way is what you find to be the safety improvements that are being proposed. Things such as the RTT bus route, uh, locations, um, signal time, timing uh, to ensure that right we're not creating any undue additional traffic delays uh, from its inter Holly's intersection with 60th, as well as 60 seconds intersection with Vasquez, Highway of uh, Vasquez uh, 85 6 are all going to be taken into account to ensure that we are having that timing that is effective and, and efficient. So, may I ask um, 
was this project over two hundred fifty thousand dollars? Yes, sir, it was, and it went through a budgeting process uh, for uh, in twenty twenty three. And when when was that approved in twenty twenty three? That would have been approved as part of uh, last year's budget, uh, which would have been in the um, uh, in the November October November time frame. Okay, so this was already voted on and approved by City Council. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, what would happen to the project if we had a a neighborhood meeting to to actually see if some of these concerns can be addressed? Besides, just thought, I know we had one last week, but I mean, obviously the the, the project would not move forward. Okay, um, and. I don't want to create a perception that that community meeting would change necessarily the design because it's that design, any changes to that design will require, like I said, additional right of way, which means potential impacts to adjoining properties. Sure. So um, once again, a project of that, of where we're at, can always be, there's some level of reconsideration that can always be taken by a council. Not say that that can't occur, um, but at the same time, in uh, transparency and just being forthright, uh, there's also limitations in which we're dealing with in the existing environment um, that may also have a limiting factor into what we can do. And a changing of the timing signal, just to put that out there because that was raised, is it viewed as a traffic calming measure? Uh, Traffic calming measures obviously have physical improvements that have a limiting effect of actually slowing people down as they're accelerating uh, through that intersection, as you as you may know, Mayor. So we can always have more engagement with our with the community to understand uh, what's been proposed, to hear their concerns, and to speak uh, frankly and honestly and transparently with them. And if there is a desire for council to do something more than what's within our existing limits, then obviously there's a budgetary impact associated with that. Um, once again, we know that this, this, this intersection is an immediate concern uh, that we were trying to address and not to say that's right or wrong, uh, but that immediate concern does not necessarily negate itself as we go through this process. So there's a balance that we have to strike there as well. All right. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Wait, I'm sorry, Ms. Younger, yes. Council Member Douglas. Jay, I wanna thank you for coming forward. This is an example of what I've been talking about for quite a while. We make decisions that impact our community without community input. And I don't wanna see this keep happening as we move forward. The people making the decisions for our, our residents don't live here. They don't know what it's like in reality to deal with issues um, that, that impact the, the people who live here. And I mentioned this at the retreat and I just don't want to see this happen again. It, it has been happening for years, apparently, and we can't continue on this way. We are not building a quality community for a lifetime by making decisions that, that, that aren't actually good for the residents. And so I thank you for coming forward with this because I miss that community meeting, but I hear time and time again from citizens, one of the reasons that they're apathetic is that when they, they go to a community meeting, the decisions have already been made and the contracts have already been signed or put forward and, and uh, so then it puts us in a situation that, that if you do put the brakes on, then you're impacting somebody's expectations of, of um, money that's coming into their business. And 
it really puts us in a difficult situation. It's catch as catch can. We can't continue on like this if we are actually going to keep our promise of providing a quality community for those who choose to make Commerce City their home. So thank you very much for coming forward with this. Um, I'm not trying to ad admonish anyone. I'm just taking this moment to point out that this is the kind of thing that I've been talking about repeatedly, and we can't continue on like this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for any consideration you can do. Absolutely. For us. I think the city clerk wants to. Uh, Councilmember Chacon has some comments to make. Oh, okay. Councilmember Chacon wants to speak with you as well. Hi, love. I wanted to address this as well. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I have a quick question. I beat this drum all the time about equity, but equity is best practices outreach. Um, there's a whole recommendation of how agencies live in silos sometimes, whether it's CDOT or RTD or um, sometimes even cities, in a way that we have to still provide a platform for community to have some type of outreach and a complaint system. Um, I'm kind of concerned, especially when we're talking about traffic density times, was that taken into consideration because of school being let out? It's only going to be worsened in the next few years. So was kind of a forecast done in how the density times during certain times of the day are going to be addressed? Because one agency might say one thing about how they're going to address the disproportionately impacted community, and another agency might say a different way. Are they talking to each other? Was that a question for me, ma'am? I'm not very clear on that. I think it is to you and to how we can get a hold of RTD, how we can get a hold of CDOT, how we can get a hold of these agencies who are making these decisions without the community having, without any of them having some type of community oversight or complaint system, because that's okay too. And then us to be able to engage that platform to where that's our form of equity. That is our job as an organization too, is to have that form of representation. How can we better represent that space? Because unfortunately, Commerce City is known as a transportation hub, but we're not. And people live here. And it's still providing a certain level of a healthy boundary that even though we have industry and commercialization, we still can have a level of quality of health and safety addressed when those agencies come in and want to impose certain projects. Mm -hmm. Mayor, if I would, just for a point of clarification, the project is $375,000, just so that there's some so that the community's hearing it, as we all understand what was approved. It was approved in October and for first reading and second reading in November of 2022, not 2023. So I want to correct myself on the record on that. And like I said, I do not contest uh, with Ms. Ms. Younger uh, or Mr. Gonzalez as it relates to their concerns or their issues. Obviously, a public meeting um, to gather feedback to understand what it what can cannot be done and what something would like to be done, what the potential impacts of that may be. So I don't disagree with the the limited opportunity that was afforded to them prior to last week. Now, obviously, where we stand is a teachable opportunity for us on how to engage going forward. And we have put and will be putting in place how to engage with our community during these type of projects as we go forward. Um, but if there's a desire for continued engagement and discussion with our community, then that's what we will do because we want to understand, we want to hear, but we also want to be, um, like I said, honest, transparent, realistic about what can be done, how it can be done, and the potential impacts associated with changes or not. Um, and we're more than willing to stand up and, and have those conversations. Thank you. Can I say one last thing? Sure. The bump outs that you're putting will narrow the, the street where the car goes anyway. So if you're gonna narrow that, you would have room on each side. That's what I would think. But that's my opinion. Thank <laughs> I thank you all for your consideration and trying to stop this. Thank, well, thank you Thank you for much. coming forward and letting us know. Thank you. Next up, we have Troy Younger. Thank you. Uh, 
We're going to tag team you. All right. Troy Younger, 5490, 61st way. I happen to live with that lovely lady back there. Um, I was also at, I'm just going to piggyback on what she mentioned. I was also at that initial 270 meeting where they talked about modifications to Vasquez. And one of the things I asked some CDOT staff was if they had taken into account the consequences of those changes on the community and was told, well, was basically told that those things are going to be on the city. At the time, I think that was before the last election cycle. And at the time, I had sent emails to all the city and council members saying, please, you know, we have to get out in front of this because there's going to be, I mean, not just to 62nd and Holly, but there's going to be consequences to all of Core City with those changes that CDOT wants to make. Um, but you know, speaking specifically about 62nd and Holly for right now, I think the best just short-term answer to the problem is some kind of police presence in the area. That'll help out with the speeding. That'll help direct traffic. That'll help with kids coming in and out of school. We've got Kearney right there. We've got Central right there. We've got the Suncor Boys and Girls Club right there. If we have some kind of a police presence there that is recognizable, that people will see and you know, say, oh, I, maybe I should stop a little bit. That might do more in the short term than doing bump outs, doing all this other stuff that after CDOT does their damage, it would be awful to have to go back in, tear that all out and redo something. Um, that's my opinion. But I think considering CDOT, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. That might be the best way to do it also. There is another 270 meeting with CDOT on Thursday at Eagle Point, 5.30. Um, the last two times they've had El Hardin. Some of you really like that. You can come get some. They will be talking about, like I said, 270, the highway. And I always think of 270, that space between York and Vasquez. Can, so that's basically what they're going to be talking about and how that's going to affect some of those communities, especially in the Rose Hill area. Because if, if they expand that too much, you're going to lose businesses, you're going to lose residents in those areas. So speaking on behalf of CDOT, I invite you all to come. <laughs> and I finished up early. My wife did a great job. And I thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Ms. Jagger. Appreciate it. Last to speak, we have Randy Wolf. Uh, good day, Council. I'm Randy Wolf. I live at 6022 Grape Drive. That's one block off of 62nd and Parkway and one block from Veterans Park. And it, uh, several of the council people have been a uh, picture sent to them of the cardboard condo that is now residing in, by, in front of El Hardin's at that small little park area. And it has been there for approximately two weeks now. I haven't gone by there this week. And it is pretty damn disgusting. They've got cardboard tarps, lumber, shopping carts, all stacked up here. Uh, I've notified the council, the, this, the two council people have seen it. Also, the representative, Rocky, has seen that. And nothing seems to be done about it. You're all tiptoeing around for some reason because you don't see it on a regular basis. If you all come down out of your little white little castles up north, your you pretty people come down to Old Town and see what's going on, you'd be pretty damn disgusted. I myself, I'm a Vietnam era veteran. And here two weeks ago, these homeless people had taken the decorative stones that are around the backside of it and stacked it on top of the marble uh, deal in, in the middle with the honoring all these different people. The, I don't recall what the, is on it, but they had them stacked up there like it was some kind of a little domino game or something. Uh, personally, I wanted to find them. I'd like to find the one that put them on there and I'd put some stones someplace that'd be uh, stacked up on top of them with this little uh, cross. Because this is getting real disgusting. They are virtually running Old Town down there, and I am very tired of it. I've lived out in, in 
Commerce City since 1978. So, and that's uh, that's quite a while. I, I think I deserve to be, have a little respect for that. And it just, uh, I, I don't know why nothing gets done about it. Everybody's just tiptoeing around. They don't want to move them. I've spoken with the Rangers. I've spoken with your cleanup crews that are down there, have to put up with them and take and uh, steam clean them to get them the filth off of it, of the, the uh, various uh, picnic tables and everything underneath those pavilions. And I was spoke, speaking with one of the men that was in the cleanup crew, and he said he had a woman come up to him, a grandmother, and said she was afraid to come to that park anymore and bring her children to play at the uh, accessories that they have for them. This is getting like really out of hand. And it isn't just one or two. They become congregated where they virtually take over one of the pavilions altogether. They have four, five, six shopping carts. Yeah, forget that. And it's five or six shopping carts and it's stuff just piled up. And I'm getting, I'm getting tired of my tax money paying your, the city workers to go and clean up their freaking mess. Well, sir, I appreciate your time. I, I've spent a lot of time down here during the week when I see things like that in here, I make sure I come down and see it myself. And I direct that to our city manager and there's been plenty of places down here have been cleaned up. I did not receive any, any information from you about this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had, I would have taken care of it. I, so. I was, I was, I was informed that you were told and showed the pictures of it. I sent pictures, matter okay. of fact, to all of oh, them. I'm sorry, I didn't. And we, I see we have quite a few deaf ears here that uh, don't care, evidently. For city council, this is a poor representation uh, of lack of people that are interested. You know, this is Commerce City. The city council is supposed to be all together here. You know, I'm not. I'm not trying to chastise you. I appreciate all you people that do show up. You know, at least you're listening to me. Now, what happens when I go out the door? You're probably go, okay, whatever. No, we appreciate your time. Yes, and we're making sure everything that you say before us is on record. Yes, and if you have any issues. And that's why there's nine of us. Sometimes we we sometimes some of us can't make it every night. Yes, I don't I don't expect an immediate snap, but no. I've, I've I've spoken with them those guys that have have to sand, to uh, steam clean the place umpteen time and says they move out as soon as we clean they move right back in. Right, this that just got to stop. And also yeah. I've been informed that Monaco Park when the new improvements and everything like that I was told that you're going to put heated bathrooms up there. My God, that's just like waving a welcome flag for these homeless. They're going to just live in the bathrooms because it's nice and warm. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but that's what I've been told. And if that is true, somebody is in, oh, somebody needs to seriously cut the power. Yeah, I think those are going to be controlled by timing devices. So they're not going to be available 24 hours a day. So there will be monitored to make sure no one is staying in those facilities overnight. So you can, you can count on that. But I appreciate your time. And uh, I was asked a city manager if you could get his information, his pictures, and send those forward to all of us. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I realize you're city manager. You've got a lot of, a lot of stuff on your plate, man. You know, and, and this is just part of the little, little stuff, but it's still the little stuff adds up this little yes, stuff and that and that and all the rest Absolutely. of this, but I, you definitely need to be well informed and I appreciate any kind of action you can do. You know, sure. the police are probably getting damn tired of going down there and running them out. We resorted to the park rangers, which for, for whatever they are, which I was told that they're just another pair of eyes to watch. So I, well, thank you. I got you, Council you need Member. to get something done about it. Please, please, yeah, Council please, Member Ford would like to address you as well. Council Member Ford. Sir, thank you for coming in today. Uh, I appreciate it. I, too, have seen uh, <coughs> the situation that's over there. Um, I've lived here my entire life. So I've been here since 66. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in the south part of the Commerce City. So um, it's very dear to my heart. And I, I did see... Um, and, and I was up in Derby not too long ago talking to some of the businesses and how some of these people are affecting their businesses. Yes. Um, I have to tell you 
that right now I don't believe there's anybody on this city council that don't that that does not want those things to be cleaned up. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some state laws and some things that are happening that make it very very difficult for our police officers to enforce moving these people. Um, matter of fact, we have an ordinance right now that says this shelter has to be offered to moving anybody outside of our right of way. And currently we have no shelter. I have requested that that ordinance be brought back forward and that we remove the portion of that ordinance that says we're required to offer shelter. Um, not that I am opposed to helping people, but because our taxpayers pay for services within our city that are not deemed to be providing a shelter aspect. Um, and the downside to it is statewide, there are laws that have been put into place that make it difficult for us to be able to move those people anywhere um, and in, in the manner that they have to be moved. Um, I would gladly ask that the staff try to prepare some of the information for you as to how that gets taken care of from a legal perspective, what we can and can't do but at the same time, <clears throat> I'm frustrated with it too. I see what's happening in Denver. I see what's happening in Aurora. I see over here along 270. Um, you know, I, I deal with it every day. I work uh, just to the east of Sap Brothers and there are two homeless hotels that have been by, by Denver. And there are camp trailers parked out in front, um, 52nd and Ivy on the Commerce City side there are unbelievable amounts of junk trailers and piles yes. of stuff. Yes. Do I want to see my city look like this? Absolutely not. So I'm, your, on, I'm on your side of this, but I want you to understand if it was up to me, we would take care of it tomorrow. But at the same time, there's a legal process and, and the state legislature puts things into place. And some of these people have protected rights that are above and beyond what I believe they should have. But I'm not, the, I'm not the state legislature, and it's very frustrating to see my community become the situation exactly what you're complaining about. So I'm glad you brought it to our attention, not that we didn't know about it, um, but I have the same concerns that you have. It's just how can we deal with it? I sit on the city council, yeah. and I am having a hard time finding a way to fix your problem, which is yeah. also my problem, which is many of our residents' problems. Mm -hmm. um, but... It's, uh, it's because we have to abide by the laws as the government and what's put forward by the state and the county. So um, I'll do everything I can and staff's hearing you, this council's hearing you, but it takes people like you to come forward and, and say, I have a concern with this because I have the same concerns, but I'm sitting up here. But it's nice to hear other residents noticing a decrease in benefit in our community. And so I wanna thank you again for coming in. Yeah. What would your what would your what would your dad think of Commerce City the way it is now? You know, I, I knew your dad. Your 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 dad and I went to the same church over here. In sure, Good same Daniel. church I went to. Yeah, how what well, how would he feel about it? You know what? Um, my dad's eighty six years old. Uh, I'm sure that he would be ashamed of what some of what has happened. He's proud of some of the things that have happened, yeah. um, but unfortunately, I all my cousins, my brothers and sisters have all grew up in this town. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, my cousins, my parents all have moved out of this town. This man over here did too. And Mr. Teeter's the yes. same way. Yes. Um, and my kids all moved out of this town. Yeah. But I'm still here and I'm still fighting the fight. Unfortunately, it wears on me every day. Yeah. But I want, I want the city to be better than what it is. That's why I'm doing the job that I'm doing. And again, I appreciate you coming in and I, I want it to get better, but uh, we're up against some challenges with how the states run. Yeah, That's all I, I got to say. I realize the, ram the legal ramifications the way I understand. I just seen on the news tonight, the Supreme Court the, for the eighth district judge or whoever it was that decided that the homeless has more rights than we do and we're supposed to supply them a home. That's supposed to be come up under decision. Uh, they said the 22nd, but I think that's probably in, uh, uh, in May or something like that. It's down the road a little bit, but at least it's been in front of the Supreme Court and we'll finally get a decision on, hey, we do or we don't. I, I understand the legal ramifications that the city has to, you know, oh, we got to 
kid glove them. Yes, I understand that. You know, I'm, I'm not mad at you all. It just, it just gets so irritating that I see it day after day after day and nothing ever happens. You know, I understand. I understand. Yeah, okay, one more. Council Member Douglas. Thank you, Randy, for coming in tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know that we have been in contact and uh, yes. um, I did pass along the pictures that you sent to me and uh, city managers on top of it. We have to um, wait for the uh, resolution or the ordinance to yes. yeah, be the modified legal, the legal so that we can, yes. we can do that. But yet, uh, you're not the only person that I've heard it oh, from, no. but you got my number and, and um, I responded. And uh, that camp still is there because I was down, I was here today and yes, it, it's, I, I drove past one day and I thought it was gone and I was <laughs> overjoyed, but it was not to be. So in, in Veterans Park, we've got to give it back to the people because uh, right now it's um, people don't feel comfortable uh, yes. using it as a park. So just wanted to put on the record that uh, um, you and I have been in contact and, and uh, you're not the only one. And yes, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. I, I was told, well, take pictures of it, forward it to you all, but I really don't want to start a photo album of this. If you know what I mean, you know, yeah, well, but, when, uh, when you sent me the it, original it, pictures, yeah, it, they the, were... The situation's there. I, I, it's, it's, my, it's my duty as a citizen of Commerce City to try and get it straightened out one way or the other, somehow. Yes. I appreciate you taking me up on my invitation to come okay. in and speak tonight. So all thank right. you. Thank, thank you, you Mr. All. Wolf. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That is all we have for speakers. All right, thank you. Members of the public were able to submit written comments online by mail. Written comments were not received by the deadline. If any follow-up is necessary, sorry. Oh, I got cut off there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry again. Members of the public were, were able to submit written comments online and by mail. Written comments were not received by the deadline. And if a follow-up is necessary, you should expect to be contacted by a staff member. Okay. Going to uh, executive session tonight. We have two executive session, and I will ask to take a vote for each of them s separately. So the first one is: I need a motion and second to enter executive session. The City Council, Commerce City, pursuant CRS 24-6402, purpose you four and a, for the purpose of discussion that the lease and sale of real property located at 5650 Bowen Court in subsection E for the purpose of determining position subject to negotiations and instructing negotiators with regards to the same. Is there any discussion? Mr. Teeter, I'm sorry, Councilmember Teeter. No discussion, I was just gonna make a motion. Okay, all right. Motion, Councilmember Kim? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say nay. Councilmember Chacon, still online. Aye. Okay, so that passes six with three absences. All right, okay, and the second one is I need a motion to second to enter an executive session, Commerce City, I'm sorry, uh, executive session of City Council of Commerce City pursuant to CRS 24-6-402, pregnancy 4F and I, for the purpose of discussion of personal matters, specifically discussing of the per and a performance evaluation of the municipal court judge. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Kim. Not a discussion yet, but so moved. Okay. All right, Councilmember Teeter. Second the motion. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. All right, that passes six to three. Okay, we'll now enter an executive session. Council re will return from executive session to take action. The meeting broadcast and recording will, re will remain up. The executive session will last approximately, I'd say, maybe 45 minutes. Thank you. Council Member Chacon, just to let you know, you will have to get out of this Zoom meeting and you will be getting a new Zoom um, email. 
to for the executive session meeting. Awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh.
All right. <clears throat> Thank you for everybody's patience. Really appreciate that. We had some audio and video uh, issues. Had those not occurred, we would have been here maybe about a half hour sooner. So we're on to proclamations. We have several proclamations on the agenda tonight. After all proclamations have been read, City Council will take five minute recess and take pictures with those presented for the proclamation. So we are going to start with proclamation for small business first. Evening. Thank you for the honor to read the proclamation in the City of Commerce City of Colorado. Proclamation. Whereas from storefront shops to high tech startups, small businesses are the backbone of our economy. And whereas America's 30 million small business businesses create nearly two out of three jobs in our economy. And whereas the city of Commerce City recognizes and value the dedication entrep and entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit of small business that keep the state and American economy going stronger and whereas the city of Commerce City provide bilingual programs and service to support small business and small business resources center, center in Derby. And whereas Commerce City has over 1,700 businesses and over 80% of them have less than 20 employees. And whereas during the week of April 28th to May 4th, 2024, the Small Business Administration is promoting Small Business Week. And whereas the City of Commerce City supports and join in this national effort to recognize America's small business and their hard work, ingenuity and dedication to grow their businesses, create jobs and ensure that our communities remain as vibrant tomorrow as they are today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I think it's for you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you reading that. Thank you. I need a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. Councilmember Ford. Yeah, I'll uh, make a motion to approve the proclamation on small businesses. Councilmember Kim. Wholeheartedly second. Okay. Uh, first and a second. Is there any discussion, Councilmember Teeter? Okay. Councilmember Ford. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Councilmember Chicone. I was trying to catch in there with aye. Thank you. All right. That passes six to three. Thank you. Appreciate that. Next up, we have proclamation on National Crime Victims Week. I invite the city clerk to read the proclamation. Whereas the victims' rights movement has resulted in the passage of laws at the local, state, and federal levels that established essential rights for victims, whereas victims' rights acts passed here in Colorado and at the federal level have provided victims with ways to participate meaningfully throughout the criminal justice process, whereas the rights of, criminal, of crime victims are best protected when all participants in the criminal justice process not only victims are appropriately educated about victims' rights, whereas supporting victims of crime is crucial to the U.S. justice system because our support honors the experiences of victims and allows them to find autonomy and empowerment through achieving self-defined goals, whereas we must help victims access the justice, assistance, and support they need to rebuild their lives Whereas National Crime Victims Rights Week honors crimes victim, crime victims and survivors, recognizes the professionals and volunteers who provide critical services to victims of crime and raises awareness about crime victims' rights and services. 
where this year's theme is a call to action for us all to create safe environments for crime victims, to share what happened to them, that by doing so, we are able to offer support options for life-saving life services, and most importantly, hope, whereas Commerce City is hereby dedicated to strengthening victims and survivors in the aftermath of crime, building resilience in our communities and our victim service providers, and bringing hope and healing to all victims and survivors. Now, therefore, I, Stephen Douglas, Mayor of Commerce City, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of April 21st through 27th, 2024, as National Crime Victims Rights Week, reaffirming Commerce City's commitment to creating a victim service and criminal justice response that assist all victims of crime during this week and throughout the year. Thank you, appreciate that. All right, I need a motion and second to approve this proclamation. Councilmember Kemp? So moved. Councilmember Teeter? Uh, first and second, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Councilmember Chacon? Aye. All right. That's six to three. Okay, up next is Arbor Day Proclamation. I invite the city clerk to read the proclamation. Whereas the City of Commerce City desires to recognize and observe Arbor Day along with others across the nation and throughout the world, and whereas the City of Commerce City has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation for the 33rd consecutive year, and whereas the City Council and staff wish to promote an interest in the planting of trees in residential areas, as well as city-owned parks, trails, and open space, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Commerce City declares April 19, 2024 as Arbor Day, recognized with activities such as providing flower seed packets and eight free trees to eight free trees to the community. Thank you. All right, need a motion second to approve the proclamation on Arbor Day. Councilmember Kim. So moved. Councilmember Ford. Second. How about a first and a second? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion passes six to three. Okay, we have two more proclamations. proclamations. First one is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and the second is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And Councilmember Kim requested to read the proclamation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas Mental Health Awareness Month has been observed since 1949 to raise awareness of mental health conditions and the importance of mental health, and mental health promotion starts in childhood, and all Coloradans benefit from access to early health education, prevention, and intervention, and half of all chronic mental illness begins by age 14 and three quarters by age 24, and suicide is now the leading cause of death for youth between ages 10 through 14. And more young Coloradans need to, access, need, need to access emotional and mental health support every day in the community and during the school day, and schools recognize that increased access to services and support within the school day is crucial to assisting our youth. And early childhood and family services that emphasize strong family relationships and healthy children foster individual well being across our communities. And Colorado continues to increase access to services that con uh, contribute to the promotion of a healthier state and make Colorado a leader in mental health in the United States. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Commerce City proclaim the month of May 2024 as Mental Health Awareness Month in Commerce City, Colorado, and encourages all members of the community to normalize discussions of mental health and seek help when needed. Thank you. Need a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. Councilmember Douglas. Sorry, Councilmember Teeter. Councilmember Douglas. Second. I have a first and a second. Any discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. Okay, it passes six to three. And the next one, the Asian Pacific Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Council Member Kim, floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas all residents deserve to be treated with dignity, respect, compassion, and justice, regardless of race, religion, color, national origin, sex, age, income, or economic status, political affiliation, military status, sexual orientation, or physical, mental, or sensory ability, and the origin of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month in the United States dates back to 1978 when a joint congressional resolution established Asian Pacific American Heritage Week in early May to coincide with two important milestones in Asian Pacific American history. First, the arrival in the United States of the first Japanese immigrants on May 7, 1843, and secondly, to contributions of Chinese workers to the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, completed May 10, 1869. And in 1990, the first Asian Pacific American Heritage Month was designated by presidential proclamation, and in 1992, Congress permanently designated May of each year as a month-long celebration that is now known as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. An additional, American, an additional Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month information and resources can be found at asianpacificheritage.gov and Asian and Pacific Islander Americans continue to enrich our in region's economy, culture, education, politics, arts, literature, science, and technological developments, despite institutional and systemic injustices designed to prevent and limit these achievements and contributions. Now, therefore, the City Council hereby proclaims the month of May 2024 as Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and encourages residents of Commerce City to learn more about those of Asian American and Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander heritage and to celebrate this month with appropriate programs and activities. Thank you. <clears throat> Need a motion and a second to approve the proclamation. Councilmember Ford. Move to approve the proclamation. Councilmember Douglas. I'll second that. <clears throat> okay, first and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed aye. say nay. Aye. Proclamation passes six to three. All right, we're gonna take a five minute resets and take pictures for those who are here. I invite council to come down and take a picture. to our, our Sikh community. And at that time, we did not have participation. So tonight we are also honoring the Sikh community. So that's why um, they are here and we're gonna take pictures as well. Thank you.
All right. Okay. Thanks for your patience. Notice the council business uh, coalition against bigger trucks. I will invite council member Kim to introduce this item. Thank you, Mayor. So a few, um, about a month ago or so, I was approached by the gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Josh Collins, I believe, with the Coalition Against Bigger Trucks, who had uh, who had I spoke with in in, in length. Um, essentially, what's what's occurring is uh, there's a number of um, bigger corporations and a handful of other companies have lobbied for legislation that would force states to allow double trailer trucks ninety uh, to double the trailer trucks. 91 feet in length called double 33s uh, on the federally designated national network, which includes 200,000 miles of roadways. Um, these are 10 feet longer than today's twin trailers and 17 feet longer than standard single trailers. Um, back in November of 2015, US Senate had rejected um, that, uh, rejected the, the vote, I'm sorry, rejected the double 33s uh, legislation that was out there by the vote of 56 to 31. Um, U.S. Department of Transportation, Department of Transportation uh, determined in 2016 that double 33s takes 252 feet to stop, which is 22 feet longer than today's twin trailer configuration. Um, Department of Transportation also found that double 33s would result in a large increase in pavement damage compared to all other uh, study configuration which could potentially result in a $1.2 billion to $1.8 billion estimated payment damage each year. Um, the letter that was brought before council was, was written up by um, Mr. Collins, who has actually lobbied uh, within other cities as well to send a message to uh, Senator Bennett regarding, um, regarding the federal legislation, HR 3372, uh, which is which would allow all states to increase the maximum weight of uh, tractor trailers on our roads to 91,000 pounds. Um, and so this letter altogether is asking, uh, I guess from what Mr. Collins has asked for was is if he would be able to obtain my support and maybe other council member support um, if they would be willing to uh, sign, uh, sign as well. Um, so my motion more so for me would be that I would request to be allowed to, uh, as a council member, to provide my support against um, H.R. 3372 uh, by uh, signing my name as council member at large um, that mess that with the message that would go out to Senator Bennett. Councilmember Ford. Yes, thank you for bringing this forward, Councilmember Kim. I would uh, make a motion to have the uh, council sign a letter in opposition. Um, I also agree that it would be extremely damaging to our roads, especially with the amount of trucking companies that we have in Commerce City. Um, so I'll make a motion to have the council uh, sign the letter as a council as a, 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 in a whole. <clears throat> okay, Council Member Teeter. I'll second the motion. Okay. But I also have a statement. Or are we in discussion yet? Yes. I just, as a long term trucker, I've, uh, uh, I just got to tell you, it's dangerous. I mean, the trucks are already heavy enough. We don't need to make them any heavier. I've witnessed a number of times the damage that uh, trucks do with uh, 80,000 pounds and, and uh, they're already too long. Most of the warehouses in the Denver area were built years ago when the maximum length of the trailers were 45 foot. Now they're 53 foot. And this, this would just make them longer yet. And, uh, what the drivers do is they have to slide their axles up to get around these warehouses so they can back into the dock. And when they slide those axles up and they have 80,000 or 36,000 pounds 
on, on a set of tandems, well, now you just increased it to like 45,000 pounds when you slide those axles up all the way and, and uh, it, it just tears up a lot of uh, property. And uh, with them being doubles and it, right now, we've, we've always had a problem with trucks blowing over in Colorado and Wyoming and New Mexico and, and uh, at 10 extra feet, they're just gonna, you're gonna have more of a blow over and it's not just putting the truck driver's life in danger, it's putting anybody that's in a vehicle driving the opposite direction or, or driving alongside these trucks when they roll over. So I am opposed to making them heavier and longer. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilmember Kim. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Ford and others who are willing to support uh, support behind this. Uh, my question is for Mr. Rogers. Uh, logistically speaking, how would this look as far as with this letter is concerned? Would it be more so one, all signatures on one or would it be all on separate signatures? Just thinking. What we've done in the past, sir, has been to affix uh, all council member signatures to a single single letter uh, that comes from the body. Um, and we have obviously your signatures on file. So this obviously action allows for us to be able to take that letter if, if you all are approving the language in that letter tonight as well, to then put it on city letterhead, fix the signatures, and then transmit that letter uh, by email to Mr. Collins at CABD. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. That's all. All right. Do you know the discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. Okay, that motion passes six to three. Okay, on to presentations. Tonight we have Parks, Recreation, and Golf Advisory Committee annual update along with PRG Advisory Park naming recognition after. All right, good evening. Just a second. Oh, not quite ready yet. Good evening, Sorry. Mayor and members of City Council. We are here tonight to present the Parks, Recreation, and Golf uh, Advisory Committee annual review. Doing the presentation for you tonight is Delilah Collins and Josh Hood, who are co chairs of the advisory committee. Okay. <laughs> good evening. Hello. Um, yes, so we're here to do the presentation, the annual presentation of um, the events that we've gone over over the past year as the Parks, Rec, and Golf Committee. And we're just waiting for the PowerPoint slide to come up, and we'll go ahead and get started. But I'm Delilah Collins. I am a resident of um, Commerce City, and Josh here is also a resident. And um, I've been on several committees with the city, so I'm, I'm happy to present to you today.
All right, now we are ready to go. Um, so again, Delilah Collins, and we're here to do the um, annual uh, presentation. Um, the purpose of the PRG is it advises the city on issues related to the planning, construction, regulation, maintenance, and repair, and operation of city-owned and or controlled parks, golf, and recreation amenities, facilities, open spaces, programs, and services. The committee is comprised of 13 members with two serving as co-chair. Currently, we have myself, Delilah Collins, I'm a co-chair. We have Charles Dukes, who is a city council member, Oz Flores, um, Bob, I, Grandinetti, thank you, Josh, um, Josh Howd, uh, Desiree Martinelli, Sean McDowell, Chris Nyork, um, Katie Southern, Southerd, uh, Michael Stegman, uh, Rick Teeter, council member, and Paul Wielander and Carl Zimmerman. Just no respect. A notation on that that we have. Our former council member, Rick Teeter, we, it's Rocky Ashley is on there. So that is not yours. That's a, a typo there. So I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Josh. Um, so we like to do this every year when we, when we kind of provide this presentation is to kind of give uh, perspective as far as why folks join the committee. Um, Everybody kind of has their own passion behind it and reasons for why they did it. So this is a few reasons listed that we have here. Um, a few members of the committee are interested in understanding the different needs for the parks, the recreation programs, the golf, um, on both, both sides of the city, northern and southern, um, and really just focusing on how we can continue to build a really strong community uh, for their families, for their kids moving forward. Uh, there's some interest in involved with the senior programs and making sure that we have activities for that. So spanning across all age ranges, um, things such as outdoor pickle court, pickleball courts, which gets a lot of traction, uh, tennis courts, keeping the neighborhoods to the east and west of Highway 85 involved. Um, it's really important to some of the committee members in terms of kind of that uh, pocket there. They want to make sure that they're top of mind as well. And the connectivity of trails, paths, and bike lanes, uh, including to said area, uh, they're just west of 85 and some of the opportunities that we have there. Some other reasons why folks have joined the advisory committee is to promote the benefits and really be an advocate. Uh, for the city and all the different offerings that the city has to encourage activity within the committee members. We've kind of made a uh, pact to where we would commit every month to participating in some sort of city uh, involved event uh, surrounding parks and recreation. And we share that at the, the monthly meetings. Uh, I think most of the committee feels that it's their civic duty to serve the community and provide feedback uh, as a citizen. And then also it's very informative for us in the sessions where we get to learn and understand how the city operates uh, with the different aspects of the committee. So some highlights of the, the work that we've done over the past year include uh, included we continued to meet in person and we also provided a virtual option. Um, we participated in the PRG master planning. Um, we supported programs such as Project Present, participated in a program and services um, on our own and we report back during our meetings. Uh, participation in Oasis Park naming. Uh, we participated in Second Creek Farm Park, volunteered and served at several events, including but not limited to concert in the park and the triathlon. And as I mentioned before, we had multiple staff presentations, um, a review over recreation programs, such as like the youth sports, for instance, fitness, wellness, uh, golf programs, park ranger program, which was very informative, Prairie, Prairie Ways Action Plan, and different department organization. Also partnered with the uh, QCF and did an 80s prom uh, which was um, fun and entertaining. Uh, great outfits, by the way. 
and a collaborative meeting with City of Brighton, uh, which I particularly found to be uh, very useful and something I think we should continue to do going forward. Uh, the city shares so many common resources, particularly on the north end, common challenges that we face. And so it's a good collaborative opportunity to partner with the City of Brighton. Here's a few photographs. Yeah, there's a few photographs of some of the things that happen around the community. Uh, the community. The other thing I wanted to um, kind of mention is that we were able to use some of our budget to purchase some um, uh, items that we were able to hand out during the community events. And uh, the city staff was gracious enough to give me a bunch of towels and I was able to hand them out during my time at the rec center. So that's very um, nice and it gets the name and the word out of the activity that we're doing. It also starts a conversation of like, you know, I got this towel because I'm on this committee and you should you know, your voice is, is valuable just as well as mine is, so. Are there any questions? Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions? Council member Kim. Thank you so much for the presentation. I guess more so, um, what would you say as far as uh, the past year or even kind of moving forward would be considered your challenge and what is it that we could do as a council to assist? If you want to come back to that later, that's fine. You could just email. But that's just a question I had, just uh, basically when it comes to all of our boards and commissions, our committees and all, I'd always love to ask that question to see if there's anything we can do to help out or do to help promote the, you know, any events or any uh, anything you guys got going on. So. I think we can think on that and we'll let you know if we have anything that comes that works. up. Nothing comes top of mind, so I think that's a good that's a good, good sign, sign. Member Kim. right? Thank you very much. There was one thing that came to my mind, though, because you know <laughs> I like to talk. Um, we were given training, board training, on how to kind of um, run our meetings as co-chairs, um, what that looks like, how to interpret certain things, um, updating our agendas to make sure that we were able to ensure that public comment was heard and given the opportunity for folks. Um, so that was really, really helpful for us. Um, sometimes when you come into a volunteer position and, they, and you kind of volunteer to do extra work, you don't really have that understanding of how things are supposed to work and how you're supposed to run those meetings. So I think that that was super helpful for us to get that training. So I'm assuming that was probably coming from Mr. Uh, Jordan yes. Roberts over there. So I really appreciate everything he's actually done with the boards and commissions as well. Um, to provide that training to especially new members who come to any board or commission or commission that's out there um, to get that training to understand how, uh, you know, uh, Robert's rules, essentially how that works and, the, and what the decorum is like um, uh, makes sense. So it's awesome. Thank you for that. Councilmember Douglas. I don't have any difficult questions for you, but I wanted to say how much we appreciate your commitment and dedication to this community. And uh, you add so much to um, the quality of life for everyone here. So thank you for, for doing what you do. And it sounds like you have a great group where everybody wants to be involved and, and uh, it sounds like you're also doing a great job uh, leading that group. So thank you so much for what you do and encouraging others to uh, be included and participate. Thanks. Yes, I wanna thank you as well. I had opportunity as a council member to serve on the PRG and it was, it was great to hear. I wanted to make sure that the folks who did volunteer that their words were not only heard, but we actually listened and did something productive and made sure whatever they, they as a group came to a consensus that the city would actually put forward some of those projects. Now, do you guys feel you benefit from that or do you feel that that's not occurring? Um, I, and I've been on a number of committees. And so one of the charges that I've had was to make sure that some of the work that we did in, in 2013 kind of continues forward out of that 2K project. Right. Um, and we have been able to see some of those projects come to fruition. And we also are, we, I, at least I do, I feel like when we do make a recommendation or we do say something, 
um, that the, our voices are heard. Okay. It's super important that people volunteer and be a part of the community because just complaining about it is not the solution. Right. It's really, really helpful for you to get involved and you'd be surprised um, at how valuable the voices are. I hear from outside the, you know, outside of our group and I bring this information back and then sure. we actually see movement the next time we come to the committee meeting. So definitely, um, you know, staff and council are doing what they need to do when they hear from the community. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your time and in, in, in serving. I just, have, I just have one comment. Um, sure. Back to council member Kim's question. I think one challenge that we've had, particularly on that committee, and I'm sure it could be others as well, is we are probably underrepresented on the south end of the city. And so I think there's some opportunity in terms of recruiting uh, and trying to encourage some civic engagement to get some more involvement on the south end of the city. Uh, I'm sure that's not the only committee, uh, but that is a challenge that we regularly face and something we've talked about as a committee. We just, I think the more of us that can put our brains together on that, the better. Thank you, <coughs> appreciate that. All right. Go on to the next one. Give me just a second, because my sure, screen's no not problem. working on this the This is the PRG the advisory. Right Park naming recognition, or oh, sorry, recommendations. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mayor. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Good evening again. So we're gonna do a presentation now on park naming. This will be for the address of 17010 East 95th Avenue, which we have been referring to as Oasis Park. So we will be talking about a recommendation tonight for that park site. Um, the council policy is CP7, which basically states uh, that council delegates recommendation authority to the Parks, Recreation, and Golf Advisory Committee, but certainly city council has final approval on naming facilities. Going to just talk a little bit about what Parks, Recreation, and Golf staff did. We did go out to the public um, for some name suggestions. Through that, we did neighborhood outreach through social media, email distribution, some social media sites. Uh, one of the things that we did was next door, and we specifically targeted the Buffalo Highlands site, which where this park is located, as you can see on the map there. Um, and just for reference, the recommended name that we are giving you to tonight um, is named from a resident that lives in Buffalo Highlands. So just a heads up on that. Through the results, we had 36 unique name recommendations submitted. Um, and through that, we had 53 residents that gave names that came down to 36 unique names. So we came together as a committee on February 20th, um, and we were given the list of 36 names of the recommendations. Um, we had a discussion, we kind of went through the list, we looked at all the names, we laughed a little bit, and then we kind of you know, read all of the descriptions. Uh, we asked staff to put together a survey monkey so that we could top, vote for our top three recommendations. Um, and the voting closed on March 1st and on March 19th, we were able to announce, um, uh, we came to a consensus of the winning name based on the data that we did during our survey. And you're right, the winner is. And so the recommendation that we came up with was Black Footed Ferret Park or our BFF park, it's our best friend park. Um, and the reason why we came up with that name is the, the recommendations that we received, they also came with an open-ended response and it gave us a description or a, a reason why they named these, um, they, they recommended the name. And the black-footed ferret is an endangered species that was released back into the reserve. There's 30 of them out there, there were 30 that were released and they're still in, thriving out there. And so we thought it was a good representation being adjacent from the reserve to have the park named after an endangered species that's actually in that reserve. And so that's how we came up with the name of the Black Footed Ferret Park. So at this point, Council, um, you have some options. You can certainly endorse the name and we'll advance it to Council in the future for meeting uh, for action. 
you have the option to amend the name or choose an alternative name if you so choose to. Thank you. Council Member Kim. If I can push the button. Thank you, Mayor. So I guess my, my question is that you, you said there was a top three. There was We voted for three. There were three. What were the three names? Um, we took the entire list and mm -hmm. we each individual member got to vote for three on the list because there was 36 names we wanted to narrow it down. Right. And so 54.5% of the committee voted for Black-Footed Ferret Park. So that represents um, six of the committee members. Uh, we did have some alternates. Um, the alternates all came in second place and there was three a three-way tie for second place. So we had Creekside Park, um, Oasis Park, I'm sorry, four came in second place. Oasis Park, Flyover Park and Sunrise Park, and those all came in second place. Okay. Okay, thanks. Any other council members? So what's the procedure here we can Oh, you know, I'm going to ask Council Councilmember Chacon. Did you would you like to say anything on this presentation? Um, just one. It seems like it's already voted on, but I was curious about if there was any um, anything done with local tribes to be able to rename spaces, or if there was anything or Indigenous communities overall, or. Is this also relating to like a wildlife corridor or something with rights of nature? I know that we're, we're kind of like a hilly plains state, but there's a lot of beauty in this type of top topography and high desert land. So I don't know. Was there anything done to kind of, I guess, have the wildlife corridor addressed too? Because it's a cute name. I'm fine with black footed ferret. Just wondering if there's other parts that we can probably try to endorse those types of narratives. that question for me? Sure. Okay, it was a little muffled, so. Um, she was asking about indigenous names. Um, mm -hmm. Now, were those from the community or? Yes, so there was a couple of names on the list, like Kalu, C-A-L-U, which would, stands for uh, the, the native lands of the area. So Cheyenne, Arapaho, Lakota, and Ute tribes that were in that area. Mm -hmm. Again, we all had an, an opportunity to vote on the entire list. Um, there's a couple of other on there, other um, uh, names on the list that also were significant to the um, the heritage of the lands that were out there. Um, and it was just the you know the data came out to be Blackfooted Ferret Park. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Councilmember Teeter. I'd just like to make a motion to uh, go with the committee recommendation and name it Black-Footed Ferret Park. Okay. Is there any of this more discussion? Councilmember Douglas. I would actually like to postpone this until we have more council members to weigh in. <laughs> Seems like there are a lot of missing council members tonight. All right. Um, while I have the mic, though, I do have a suggestion for finding people uh, from the south, and that would be to uh, maybe advertise the position at the uh, Eagle Point Recreation Center, and maybe have some people down there that could talk to people. So, since I had the mic, I thought I'd take that opportunity. City Attorney? I was just going to say there's a motion on the floor, but there has not yet been a second. Right. And I was, I wanted more discussion before that. And of course, it was already said. So uh, I was going to ask if we were finished for discussion for bringing that up. So there's a there's a motion on the floor. I need a second. Councilmember Ford? I'll second the motion. Okay. There's a uh, motion is second, and the um, motion is to take the recommendation. Need a discussion, Councilmember Kim? Yeah, again, just can you can you remind me what were the 
the one, the four names that you said that tied in fourth or second place. You said Oasis Park was one of them. Oasis Park, Creekside Park, Flyover Park, and Sunrise Park. Okay. All right. That's that's all the questions I had. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Councilmember Ford. Yes. Uh, on on discussion. I know uh, over the years I've seen a lot of different park names come before the city council. And, uh, you know, I don't always agree with them. I, I don't always, it's not always my choice. Blackfooted Ferret Park wouldn't be my choice. However, we have the PRG for a reason, and it's to go through and help us make some of these tough decisions. And I guess, uh, you know, we've, we've received, at least I did an email. Um, one, one person in the community was wanting it to be about a hawk or a bird of prey or something of that nature. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I think that uh, the reason we have a park naming process is to let that go through the PRG. And if that is the, naming, is, that is the name that the PRG has come up with, um, then I'm going to be supportive of it. Thank you. The other discussion? Okay. Motion and second was made. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Okay. All right. We got um, four four yeses and two nays, so it passes four to four to two. Nay or can Douglas, it, do we have to? Mayor Douglas, who was that second nay? Myself. Sir. So, but is that fine for for the council that sits? It's not five; it's four, four to two. Correct. Two. It, so there are four of the of those members present. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're not going to have an oil and gas monthly update that's been moved till May. So we're going to go to the consent agenda. And the consent agenda includes items that are routine, procedurally informational, self-explanatory, and non-controversial. These items are presented to council for a single motion to vote. Any member of council may ask to remove a specific item off the consent agenda for further discussion in a separate vote. Tonight, there are 10 items on the consent agenda. Do any council members wish to remove any items? Council member Douglas. I have two items that I would like to remove, and that would be the first one is 2024-02-2. Um, uh, and the second being 2024-040. All right. Any other council members? No, I have. Five, and I'll explain why. Um, the first one is resolution 2024-31, asphalt specialists. Second one is resolution 2024-32, Surrey Sill project. Third one, resolution 2024-33, hot in place. Resolution 2024-235, concrete flat work. And resolution 2024038 transportation planning. All right. Okay. I need a motion. Okay. 32, 30, All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. As amended, will the city clerk read a title and take a roll call vote? 
Mayor yes. Douglas, will you go through your resolutions again? I sure, sure. All, all right, I'll Thank just you. do the resolution numbers in because they're all two. They're all 2024. Yeah. Uh, first one's 31. Second's 32. Third one's 33. Fourth one's 35. And the fifth one is 38. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You know, motion a second to, to approve. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, need a motion a second to approve the amended items. Will the roll, will the, sorry, will the, I already said this, will the city clerk read the title and take a roll call? Sorry, I was in the wrong setup here. Mm -hmm. Apologize for that. All right, minutes of the April 8th, 2024 special meeting. Oh, you know, one correction, I'm sorry, I should have said that. Um, there is a correction on the minutes that says councilman uh, member, me as a council member, not Mayor Douglas. Hmm. We will correct this. <laughs> Apologies. I apologize. I should have pulled one off, but just adjustment. Sorry about that. So, Mayor Douglas, that is an administrative change, so you could still approve those minutes. And I'm going to look at City Attorney Lee just to make sure. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's a scrivener's error, so yeah. that's not a big deal. Thank you. Uh, then we have Ordinance 2571, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City by reappropriating remaining American Rescue Plan Act funding balances in the gen General Fund and Facilities Services Fund and returning a surpl surplus transfer amount from the Fleet Management Fund to the General Fund in the total amount of $2,494,500 and authorizing the expenditure thereof. Ordinance 2574, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City by recognizing the remaining portion of the city's total $10,505,025 American Rescue Plan Act funding allocation in the amount of $7,453,025 and authorizing the expenditure thereof. Your vote is open. Council Member Chacon, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. There. It passes six with three absences. Thank you. All right, next, um, here was six, see, seven items removed. And I call on Council Member Douglas to bring your items forward to explain. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first one that I had is uh, 2024 dash 022 and that is regarding um, the oasis park i just i have some questions on on um, kind of the uh, some discrepancies that i saw in it and i just i guess i want clarification i i certainly do not want to hold this up in any way because i know this park has been a long time coming and it, it wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for some very dedicated community members who who uh, saw that they weren't getting what they were promised and they were diligent in bringing it forward and uh, uh, so this is a uh, uh, a work of dedication and passion by community members. So it shows what what can be done by community members uh, given uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, pursue what they, they feel is right. So I'm, I'm not trying to hold this up in any way, but I would really like some clarifications 
Um, I know there was a bid that was put out and um, it looks like uh, that uh, contract is probably in the works. Um, the one question that I had on it is about the items outside contract, collaborative purchasing, water sanitary tap fees, approximately 950,000, which is almost, a, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. And uh, how much of that is going to tap fees and, and um, what does that provide in the park? So I don't have the exact number that's going to the tap fees, but where that money is going to is for drinking fountains and the, uh, the restroom in the park and irrigation. Okay. Um, I'd really like to know how much um, is, is going to the water district for the, those services. I, it would have been nice to have a, a breakdown on that and you know, I like I said, I'm going to be supportive of this, but like for the future, I really like to see something like that broken down. The other problem that I had with it is on uh, the resolution authorizing award of the contract in section two. It says acceptance bid, the contractor's bid in the amount of four million eight hundred and fifty thousand five hundred and sixty four is a far cry different from the um, the second bid, um, which came in at what well, with everything the the tap fees and all of that three thousand uh, um, three million uh, thirty eight thousand. So that's a difference of um, one million eight hundred and twelve dollars uh, and five hundred and sixty four dollars. I don't think I said that right, but that's that's almost two million dollars. So, could you explain that to me and and uh, why there's such a big difference and why that is the number on the the uh, resolution authorizing the award of the contract? So. As I understand, you're looking at the resolution number and you're looking at the 4.8 million that's referenced in section two versus what's within the contract? Right, which, um, no, the, the bid that's on the um, council communication, because I don't see that number on the, the only number I see on the um, resolution is the 4,850,000. 564, but on the council communication, the total with everything with the construction contract bid is 3,038,000. So what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am, I see what you're talking about looking at it. The peers of resolution has uh, the inaccurate contract award amount. The contract award amount is 1.9. Um, for, I just thought that was a big difference, so I thought I'd better bring it forward. No, I appreciate it, yes. Um, I, I think in that it's representing the wrong number. Um, the actual compensation or for the contractual price to deliver the park is $1.908 or $1,908,000. Right. $1, Okay. My apologies for that. It's 1.9. That's My apologies. all right. You're, you're allowed to typo. It just uh, it seemed like such a big difference in the number and I didn't Understood. want this to slip through and then somehow we were legally bound to, you know, if it didn't get caught. So, so this will just, the resolution then will be corrected. We'll get that corrected. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, great. And then how do we proceed from here? Do I go on to my next one or we, do we vote on this one? So, um, Councilwoman Douglas, Douglas, if if there's going to be a motion to vote on this, I think you could make a motion to amend the resolution to have the correct number that would match the, the contract number. 
That way it's on the record that you're approving a, a resolution with the accurate number. All right, so can I just say so moved on that? <laughs> so I don't have to repeat everything that you just said because I don't think I could. Um, so you could make a motion to- Can you walk me through it? So I'll make a motion to- Make a motion to approve resolution number 2024-022. Okay, so I make a motion to approve resolution uh, 2024-022. Dash zero two two, with the modification in the resolution. With the modification in the resolution. In section two. In section two. To have the contractor's bid amount. To of, have the contractor's bid amount of. One million nine zero eight. Correct, one million nine hundred and eight thousand dollars and zero cents. And zero cents. Period. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you for your motion. Thank you. Councilmember Teeter. Second the motion. Okay. So the first, sorry, I have a first and a second. This is a resolution. So see, uh, clerk, read, read the title and take a voice vote, please. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, this is a resolution. Yes. I do need to read the, the title, right? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 2024-022, a resolution authorizing award of a contract for construction services for the construction of Oasis Park to Colorado Design Scapes Incorporated. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon, how, how would you vote? Yes. Thank you. All right, that passes six to three. Okay, Councilmember Douglas, your second item, please. All right, second item is, I believe it's resolution 2024-040. And that has to do with the um, spray grounds splash park. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it's one and a half million dollars. We already have this, the, the spray grounds there already. I understand that there's going to have to be some work to tear things up to get to the parts that need to be replaced and everything. I didn't have any time to research how much something, I mean, how much it is just to build a sp spray ground, but 1.5 seems like an exorbitant amount of money to me. And to have it on a consent agenda like this, um, kind of blows my mind a little bit, $1.5 million. That's a lot of taxpayer money. And I understand that every the kids love this. And yes, we want it working. The other thing that I um, saw in the contract that was they, they had up until two, uh, 2027 to complete the, that's also, that's three years. So... I mean, to me, 1.5 million, we could have one in the South and one in the North for that much money. But so if you could explain this to me so that I understand what's going on and why we should approve this without going back and maybe doing a little bit more work on it to figure out if we couldn't get it done for less, I'd really appreciate it. Thank That's you. absolutely a great question, uh, Councilmember Douglas. So with the 1.5 million, and just for clarification, um, it is 1.5 million. We also have over $700,000 in an Adams County grant that is helping fund that within that 1.5 million. Um, the spray ground itself, we're looking at actually doing a modernization of the spray ground. So it's not just repairing it, we're gonna modernize it. And so that comes through some of the process also of design and bringing it up to today's standards. The spray ground is over 15 years old and just in the need of 
uh, being updated. So with that will come redoing the pump room in its entirety, which is starting to fail and we have some leaks in there. Uh, this spray ground itself has around 40 jets that just come up from the ground. Uh, through this redesign, we're actually going to modernize it where we have stuff above ground, where there's stuff that comes out from, you know, the top and there's spray features from the top instead of just coming from the ground. So it's not just a repair, but a modernization itself of the spray ground. Our plan is to run through this summer. We will then start construction right after Labor Day when it, uh, it closes. And then we plan to have everything fixed and repaired and brand new to open in 2025 Memorial Day weekend when we open. Okay. That is the plan. So why did we give them until 2027? That I think was just um, just to ensure that we have the timeline in place, but we'll have it done in 2025. Okay. Um, and so is that the same pump that that kept the Paradise? Totally Not separate pumps. Things? They're separate pumps, correct. But this one is on, uh, being over 15 years old, is on the verge of failure and has some leaks as well. So that's why we're going to totally redo the pump room and modernize the features as well to give some kids some new features out there to play on. Okay, so with this, you said it was a uh, $700,000? From Adams County grant open space that okay. we, we were awarded, correct. And so we would be responsible for how much then? We're approximately um, about $700,000, $750,000 that we're putting into the funds ourselves okay. to get to that $1.5 million number. Is there any way that we can change that contract to make them, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine if it's a good contractor and they're reliable that it's, it'd be done in 2025, but to give them that leeway just seems we can change that number on the date for sure okay and i'm probably going to have to do an amendment on the <laughs> with the motion on this um let me see what was my other oh and then it is going to be functioning this summer through it will be functioning this summer um not at full operation but it will be functioning for the kids to be out there and play okay just for a point of clarity, while we, we may want to change contractual terms, things of which we've already negotiated to this point with the vendor, if we're going to change a date, a number, that's something I would advise that we'd want to communicate with them before just yeah. widely accepting right. and saying that exactly. we will do such because they may come back and say. Plus, you saved me from having to make a crazy motion. So. <laughs> so. While it may be a de minimis change in our minds, they may see it very differently depending upon the weather in Colorado as we're experiencing now. And obviously, it's a very short window in the time frame that has to be operated, which is typically during the winter periods. And until you actually start breaking ground, you don't know what's underneath there. And that's probably the biggest concern of ours. We don't know what's underneath the concrete and in the, and in the piping that will need to be addressed. Uh, so I think there's some contingency planning that's built in. Obviously, we're wishing and hoping for the best, hoping for the best, right? Being able to get it done. But I think they're also trying to navigate what is a situation that we are all very, uh, we don't know what's going on down there until we put a shovel. Okay. So was this only uh, presented to like one contractor to give us a, um, a bid on how much this was going to cost or? We opened it up on Rocky Mountain Bidnet and got, um, I believe it was three bids on the spray, on the this spray ground. This was the lowest one? Correct. Okay. All right. That's all the questions that I had. I just wanted to make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing for our, our citizens. Thank, Thank you. you. So I will, you want to help me with motion again? <laughs> You're not making a modification, correct? No. Okay, so then you are making a motion to approve to approve resolution resolution 2024 040. 040. Thank you. Okay, there's the motion. That's the motion. Looking for a second. Councilmember Kim? So moved. Yeah, a motion and a second. Will the clerk read the title and take a voice vote, please? 
Resolution 2024-040, a resolution authorizing an award of a professional services agreement for reconstruction of spray grounds at Pioneer Park. Thank you. All right. Do, would you like me to use the computer system for this vote? Uh, yes. Well, I can say the last time we took a We can. Computer, yeah, I have it already I done. That was going to be a voice. But okay, go ahead. Heard that. Thank Your you. vote is open then. Council Member Chacon, how would you vote? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that passes six with three absences. Thank you. Okay, um, I have five items here, and then the way I was reading this on the presentations, there every single let's see from the Resolution 31, 32, 33, and 35 were all on one. They're all on the present on the presentation. They were all under one recommendation, and so. The reason why I'm asking that I pull these off is there's several projects going on in the city and just making sure we could take advantage because I know there could be change orders. And is that correct? That there could be room to add other projects on the scale? Is that correct? Typically, we, we've been able to add projects um, when it comes, um, if we have any excess funds available. We've also done so through additional appropriations that obviously come before council if there's uh, a need to do so. Um, if we are running short and there's the ability by the contractor to fit it, fit it within uh, the prescribed schedule. So it's not uncommon to, to have done so, to do so, excuse me. Okay, thank you. Because what I was gonna ask to uh, include our, our, our men are, are asked I had my meeting with uh, Suncor executive over there, um, Jeff Krabs, and he had indicated that, hey, we, we actually make the asphalt. We would love to collaborate with Karma City and see about patching these holes over there that runs along their, their road. Don't know if that's the, the CDOT's responsibility, the city's responsibility in those roads, or our, our, Sun, our Suncor. And I, you know, I mentioned that before last month and didn't know where we were at. If anybody did a follow up with Suncor to ask them about the road. I, I can't speak specifically about on, on that matter, but um, to the topic of the road, are we talking about 56 or are we talking about? We're Brighton? talking about Brighton Boulevard that goes down in front of Suncor just to the east. So that would be the responsibility of, of CDOT. So that would be a coordination and discussion with them and their staff about okay. um, making this upkeep. I think one of the things that we've talked about and are trying to advance, and I, I can't speak to where we're at, um, is a devolution of Brighton Boulevard that would allow for us to have control when, with respect to the maintenance, the upkeep, the repaving, um, or reconstruction of that road as, as deemed fit and necessary. But until such time, we'd have to work through CDOT, given it that that they have the authority over such road. Okay, and the other one would be 64th from Brighton Boulevard that I guess goes into Mill Road. It's like craters over there. It's probably less than 100 yards, I guess. 64th, 64th to 64th, Brighton six, Boulevard? From Brighton Boulevard going east, turns into Mill Road. Old Mill Road? Old Mill Road. Um, I believe also that portion of Old Mill Road is also CDOT right of way okay. uh, in which we would have to coordinate and work with them as such. But Mr. Poe, if you are, I can't, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. If you are here, sir, if you don't mind coming up to the podium, particularly on that road. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Mr. Rogers is correct. The, the part that is in its worst shape is in the CDOT right of way. We have reached out and talked to CDOT, especially after the comments that you made previously on okay. Brighton Road as well as the Old Mill Road. Uh, Brighton Road, I was informed by CDOT, they have in their overlay schedule uh, for 2027 for Brighton Road. 
we are working with them to see if they can move that up in their schedule with the ability to have the conversation of the devolution. Because that way, the you know, in a perfect world, the asphalt overlay would, would occur. It would be in a very good um, condition that the city could maintain afterwards and then devolve it, and then we would maintain that, that roadway afterwards. Um, so we are, we are talking to them about that, as well as 74th. Um, they do have plans to do an overlay um, the end of this year or and in, in into the uh, 25 for 74th, and they're adding sidewalks and, and other improvements. Uh, so that's another opportunity. But we have talked to them about Old Mill Road as well. And actually, one of the projects that we submitted for our capital improvement plan for this for 2025 is also looking at uh, collaborating with CDOT for Old Mill Road. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then that's an asphalt specialist. And the other one is a, is a slurry sill. And I know there's a bunch of projects as well. Correct. Now, is this slurry sill going to go after the, the roads that was reading the projects on the map that, that were chip sealed? And then going back and making sure that they were, the next application is a slurry sill? Uh, the roadways that we're um, slurry sealing now, I'm not, I don't believe they've been chip sealed before. Okay, this is just a new treatment to basically seal the roadway up. We'll go, we'll go ahead and seal the cracks and then put the slurry seal afterwards. Okay, so this is not a complete slurry seal that covers the road completely? It'll cover the, it'll look like a, a new road. Okay, yes. so the, then that's reunion, um, say Parkside North from, from um, sorry, Parkside South, but uh, Unity Parkway North up towards 104th. As that road on both sides, because they're they're um, they're, they're one way road. streets, and right. those roads have. I drove. I, well, I looked at your this situation here. I drove around, and those were previously chip sealed. They were, yeah. and it was a, a, a smaller rock chip seal. Right. We typically don't like to put those in residential. Yeah. It's not the application that we want to move forward with. Um, so the the slurry seal is a lot finer rock, and it's uh, makes it a lot smoother, better for residential. Yeah. streets well i appreciate that because last time not last time but years back when they did this slurry sill slurry sill was actually cheaper than than the chip sill right. we ended up doing chip sill and it was, became a big mess for everybody yeah, i heard about those stories <laughs> yes <laughs> we don't the other to... one is hot in place correct um and just asking if um not because i live there but it's pretty bad on unity parkway from Unity Lane on Parkway going, they're both one-way streets leading up to Parkside North. As you head north, there are 12 cracks. And then as you get towards Parkside uh, North, there's a pretty good size uh, um, rut. And then as you go the opposite way north, there's 11. And you know, those are problematic for people's cars. Every time you hit it, those, those, those cracks expand. There's also one on Telluride. Let's see, Telluride and in Sedalia, there's one that the cracks are about three feet wide and it goes from one side of the road to the other. Right. So I just wanna make sure that those get in the list, be taken care of because if, as the quantity, you know, if there's leftover asphalt to take care of these, that would be great. Yes, sir, if you could, uh, yeah, just if you have those locations, you can email the city manager. We'll make sure. sure we'll take a look at it. All right, and then the last one is the concrete flat work, which back in last year, there was a, a homeowner on Troy and 106 Way where the roots are heaving up the sidewalk at a, at a good pitch, and she was told to hold off until after the election. And since then, nothing's been done as far as as far as far work goes. She actually went and had the tree cut down in the backyard that was causing root problems. So she's not, there's not any problem doing her side, but there wasn't, there, there, there wasn't indication what was gonna be done on our side or the HOA. And I think that's, that's, not, that's not the issue we, that we could go over, but um, you know, if we're gonna do concrete work and I'm gonna ask if you could add this to the list too. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, the, it depends on where the location is as far as the maintenance of sidewalks. Mm -hmm. If they are detached away from the curb, those under our current code is the property owner. 
Right. Uh, if it's in the core city where it's all one uh, unit with a curb and gutter, uh, the city does maintain those because it's part of it's becomes part of the roadway at that point. Okay. And it's only uh, fair here because across the street, work was done previously in the years. Right. right next is that a homeowner, but the, that work was done by the city. So I just want to make sure we're, we're we treat Being everybody consistent. the same. Yes, sir. And then also for 2025 and our capital improvement project, we're proposing a program um, that's going to be under consideration, um, obviously through the budget process for a 50-50 uh, split where the city would manage the contract and the uh, homeowner would just pay the, the cost that would it take to, or half the cost, and the city would pay the other cost to try to encourage um, to get those areas that are currently being maintained by the property owners, um, get those fixed in a, in a way that can be a little bit more manageable uh, from a pocketbook standpoint. Okay. Well, if we have that discussion, that it should be between the city and the HOAs, making sure that citizens are paying the HOA, is that cost covered? That way right. they're not having to pay twice. Um, so I, I'm asked the council if, if this is okay to add those items that are, that are acceptable and not going out of the scope for resolution 31, 32, 33, and 35. And if those could be read together and voted on, if if that's okay with council, that'd be my motion. Uh, Mayor, sorry, because we pulled them out of sure. the consent agenda, my okay. recommendation would be to vote on each of them separately. That's fine, absolutely. Okay, we'll go um, make a motion to approve resolution, I'm sorry, resolution 2024-31, Make your motion, is there a? I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't hear your question. Well, I'm asking about this, so I'll make a motion. Sorry, so you can make a motion to approve resolution 2024-031 okay. as is. Sure. Sorry, I was speaking with the city manager because there was some commentary from you on maybe adding something. Sure. Um, so I might need some clarification if so you're can I asking. ask to, to uh, uh, approve with the amended? If yes. you could clarify what the amendment would okay. be, it would be helpful. Sure. Um, Do you need a second? For the well, I, we're just trying to clear, clear this up. I, would, I need to hear what the proposed amendment is to okay. see if you can do that. And proposed the proposed amendment was to we talked about Mill Road and all that. That can't be done because that's pretty much C dots. The other one was so I guess since that can so I guess it just this one would be as is. This would not be amended on this one. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor to approve resolution 2024-031. Yes, motion on the floor. Need a second. Second. Council member Teeter. See you, Andrew. Thank you, Mayor. I, I do want to caution. We're changing a scope that has not been agreed upon by our contractors. So that may be, this may be a premature motion to vote. So no amendment to adding it. So, okay, let me ask you this. How about if just as they are, if I could submit these later and if they could be changed order that way and accept them then, I would just thought I had to go through the process mm -hmm. before council to add, add those on. Perfect. What I would say is you, you've, you've voiced what you would like to see added. You could make a motion to approve as is, submit a list, and that when we can work with our contractor to adjust accordingly and come back with an appropriation yeah. to add those additional dollars like we've done in past years. All right, I appreciate that. And Sorry. just to be clear, on the floor is a, a motion to approve the resolution 2024-031 as it is. As is, yes. And it was seconded. Second by Council Member Teeter. Correct. All right. Okay, res, um, so resolution said the city clerk, read the title, take a roll call vote, please. 
Resol resolution 2024-031, resolution awarding the 2024 asphalt mill, mill and overlay pro project to Asphalt Specialties Company Incorporated. Your vote is open. Council Member Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion passes six to three. Okay, next one is resolution 2024-32. Resolution authorizing award contract for construction of a 2024 Schillery sale project to A1 chip sale company. The motion, need a second. That's Mayor Kim. I'll second. Okay. Motion is second. City Clerk, please read a title. Take a roll call vote, please. Resolution 2024-032, a resolution authorizing award of a contract for construction of the 2024 slurry seal project to A1 Chip Seal Company. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that passes six to three. Next one is a resolution authorizing award a contract for construction of the 2024 Hot in Place pavement project to Cutler Repavement INC. It's a motion. Council Member Teeter. Move for approval. Okay. All right, got a motion and a second. That was a second. All those? Okay, Council Member Kim. A second. Kim. Second, got a motion and a second. City Clerk, read the title and take a book call vote, please. Resolution 2024-033, a resolution authorizing award of a contract for construction of the 2024 hot in place pavement project to Cutler Repaving Incorporated. Your vote is open. Council Member Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion passes six to three. Okay, the next one is resolution 2024-35 for ward contract construction of 2024 contract. Concrete flat work repair project to Gold Star Con Concrete Incorporated. That's a motion. That's Member Teeter. I move for approval. That's Member Kim. Second. We got a first and a second. City Clerk, please read the title and take a we'll call vote. Resolution 2024-035, resolution authorizing award of a contract for construction of the 2024 concrete flat work and repair project, Gold Star Concrete Incorporated. Your vote is open. Mm. Council Member Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm motion passed to six to three. Before I go on to the last one, and I ask council uh, to extend the meeting for 45 minutes if, if needed. Council member Teeter. I move for approval. Okay. Need a second. Yep, so member Kim. Second. Appreciate that. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no or nay. Aye. So are you a nay, Councilman Kim? Okay, so that passes five, five to one. Five to, no, five to three. Five one, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm doing math tonight anyway. All right, five to one with three absences. I was concluding them. Okay, appreciate that. All right. 
Okay, um, I pulled off resolution 2024-308. And the reason why I ask about this, this is gonna be, this is for the transportation master plan update. Is that correct, city manager? Yes, sir. And so we have a 2010 in place. And could you tell me how much different this is gonna be towards the 2010, and just to add that we are going to, uh, there's a hearing that's coming up from, from, from CDOT that's uh, gonna do some evaluations. If there's any way that we could wait until that is done to see what they recommend before we proceed since it seems like most of our roadways are built out and the new ones that are gonna be added would be uh, newer subdivisions that have not been created. I guess I, I would need to be further educated on what CDOT is proposing and wanting to move forward. It's hard for me to yeah. to say if it's prudent or not uh, to wait and, you know, most of our long range planning efforts, whether it's transportation or, or land use is somewhere between a 12 to 14 month process. Mm -hmm. So there's always opportunities to be able to take whatever information, whether it's from RTD, whether it is from CDOT, E470, to include into our master plan as they continue to work in parallel with us. And obviously we will work with them collaboratively on, on this. Um, speaking to the, the comp plan, uh, not comp plan, excuse me, the master transportation plan and, and how uh, different it may look from uh, it's uh, 2012 pre or 2010 predecessor, I think, once again, it's going to be uh, obviously what we've outlined within the scope of work, looking at our multimodal transportation opportunities. There's been new emerging trends that weren't fully uh, entertained um, at the time in 2010, like microtransit, which is now a reality for how we leverage um, certain mass transit autonomous vehicles, how we look at um, certain capacity needs on where we continue to grow um, and or reassessment of where our regional roadway uh, and backbone infrastructure stands. Uh, when we think about the continued growth of the city, uh, we have a number of roadways such as High Plains Parkway, Himalaya Parkway, Piccadilly, as you continue to start heading out east over to the north side of, uh, north side of the airport, as well as in and around the E-470 and Tower Road corridor in which we need to think about those continuous improvements and also how it looks at um, other infrastructure that may tie into that, whether that's interchange, new interchange locations that may be off of 70, um, how we look at bridges over top of our, our railroads. So it's gonna be a multifaceted uh, approach. Um, I can't give you specific details because we haven't really jumped into those specific details yeah. as it relates to those various components that you'll typically find, right? Transit, roadway infrastructure, um, associated improvements with our, our regional partners. But um, that's at a high level of, about how this will obviously be a more modernized approach, taking in emerging trends and trying to address issues we've heard from our community over the past 14 years. All right. You know, I would be in support of this if it included innovative transportation as far as how we could actually look at the corridor on on um, highway 85 with grade separation and not not the road being separated but the tracks along that way um, spurs off of uh, Quebec coming down tower uh, things off of e470 as far as as uh, uh, mobility and not just tweaking what we have, yeah. but really thinking outside the box. And so far the, the projects I've, you know, when it comes to master plans, all that, it's kind of been just what, tweaking just what we have, yeah. not really looking innovative and looking outside the box. And, and I would say you all as council get to help, obviously not just help, but guide and, and give policy leadership and dictating when going through the visioning workshop with our contractor yeah. about looking for innovative practices, looking for creative solutions to existing uh, issues that we have 
in our environment today. So I wouldn't say that innovation and creativity and challenging the status quo is off the table, but obviously they're going to look for um, our counsel for that leadership yep. as to how bold, how broad do we want to be, but at the same time, there, we have to have some level of realism and how we can actually go about delivering those improvements so that it's just not something that's gaining dust on a shelf. So there's a balance there, but that comes in the conversations with the contractor as we're going through those various stages of the long-term planning process in and around our transportation uh, right. systems. I appreciate that. That's the conversation I wanted to hear. Okay. All right. Um, it's all having that. So I'd like to make a, a motion to uh, approve resolution authorizing city manager to negotiate a contract with Bel or Holt and Belvig for the transportation planning engineering professional services for update of the trans transportation master plan. That's the motion. Need a second. Councilmember Kim? So moved. Okay. All right. Councilmember Teeter? Second. Got a first and a second. The city clerk, please read the title and take a roll call vote. Resolution 2024-038, a resolution authorizing the city manager to negotiate a contract with Felsberg, Holt, and Ulevig for transportation planning and engineering professional services for the update of the transportation master plan. Your vote is open. Thank you. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that passes six to three, three absences. Thank you. All right, moving on to ordinance on first reading, ordinance 2569, utility trailer and residential zone. Do we need council members have any questions for staff? Seeing that I have a question, I had an email from uh, Tom Green with United Power and it was explained to me, and it's in the charter there, that this, that this stipulation here does not have any effect on companies coming in and doing services within the city, uh, emergency bases, and maybe working on something that's more than the typical five hours. And I uh, got um, clarification on that, it was accepted. So, and I, and I appreciate that. I reached out to our, our city attorney and he directed me to the right reading of this ordinance. So I appreciate that. Okay, seeing no more from city council members. I need a motion to second to introduce ordinance 2569 by council as seated and approved on first reading. Council member Kim. So moved. Council Member Douglas. I'll second that. Okay, got a first and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, will the city clerk read a title? Take a roll call vote, please. Ordinance 2569, an ordinance amending the sec section 2105 of Article 2 of Chapter 11 of the Commerce City Revised Municipal Code to add the definition of utility trailer and make related clarifying changes. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Okay, that motion passes six to three. Next one is ordered 2575, click it or tickets, uh, CDOT grant. Do any council members have questions for staff? I need a motion to second to introduce ordinance 2575 by council is seated and approved in the first reading. Councilmember Kim. So moved. I'll second that. Councilmember Douglas. I was just going to second, but you had All right. You got a uh, motion by, uh, said by Councilmember Kim, second by Councilmember Douglas. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the city clerk read a title and take a roll call vote, please? 
Ordinance 2575, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the Colorado Department of Transportation grant in the amount of $6,000 for click it or ticket and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that passes six to three, three, three appuses. Okay, next one, ordinance 2582 C. grant for the 64th uh, Avenue corridor. Any council members have questions for staff? Seeing none, in the motion is second to introduce ordinance 2582 by council as seated and approved on first reading. That's member Teeter. Move for approval. That's member Kim. I'll second that. Got a first and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Will the city clerk read a title? Take a roll call vote, please. Ordinance 2582, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City, Colorado, by the recognition of the Colorado Department of Transportation grant in the amount of $200,000 for the East 64th Avenue corridor study and the authorization of the expenditure thereof. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Thank you. All right, um, need to clarify on the consent agenda. There are some changes, but it wasn't clear on the motion in the second. Yes, Mayor, there were three items that remain on the consent agenda. The minutes of the April 8th, 2024 meeting, ordinance 2571 and ordinance 2574. And we did not uh, record the motion to, or the second to to approve or to vote on the consent agenda. So we ask that the council please do, do so. Okay, I need a motion and second to approve the consent agenda on those items that were amended. Council Member Teeter? Move for approval. Council Member Ford? Second. At a first and a second, will City Clerk read the title and take a roll call vote? Minutes of the April 8th, 2024 special meeting. Ordinance 2571, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City by reappropriating remaining American Rescue Plan Act funding balances in the General Fund and Facilities Services Fund and returning a surplus, surplus transfer amount from the Fleet Management Fund to the General Fund in the total, total amount of $2,494,000 $500 and the authorization of the, the expenditure thereof. Ordinance 2574, an ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the City of Commerce City by recognizing the remaining portion of the city's total $10,505,025 American Rescue Plan Act funding allocation in the amount of $7,453,025 and the authoriz authorizing the expenditure thereof. Your vote is open. Councilmember Chacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay, that motion passes six to three, three absences. Okay, going to Administrative Council Business, Quality Community Foundation roster update. We have now an update on the Quality Community Foundation roster. I will invite Jordan Roberts, Deputy City Clerk, to, to make a presentation. Good evening, Mayor Douglas and Council. Clerk's office is here to provide just an update on the QCF roster as it currently stands. A little bit of context, per the QCF bylaws and founding documentation, the board will comprise of not less than five, no more than 11. The current roster of the QCS has exactly five members with two members indicating that they will be stepping down in the next couple of months. In collaboration with community relations, the clerk's office initiates quarterly recruitment efforts, including social media posts, connected news articles, updated vacancy information on the city's website, and in-person recruitment efforts at events like music and the parks. Uh, since mid-2022, there have been seven applications with five appointments to the QCF. In total, there have been 19 QCF members appointed since 2016, with nine resignations and three members electing to not reapply since then. 
Staff is bringing this to the council's attention because should the number fall below five, the QCF board will not be able to meet, which might cause disruption or delay to the administration of the QCF scholarship program. The next round of interviews will be held on April 20th, this Saturday, uh, with only one applicant indicating they would take a QCF appointment if they are not selected for the applied body. Um, with just a little bit more of context, the QCF is organized to support and obtain funding for post-secondary education and youth recreational program scholarships offered by and through the City of Commerce City and provide grants to, to fund various City of Commerce City programs which benefit the public. Uh, the QCF partners with the Police Department and Parks, Recreation, and Golf Department to host the annual Kurt Hall Memorial Golf Tournament in addition to several fundraising events throughout the year. Uh, the QCF provided their last annual update to the City of Commerce City on July 2023. Um, and again, just to put this out there for council and for the public that are listening, the clerk's office is ready to facilitate interviews should there be an interested number of candidates. Uh, thank you very much for your time. That's all we have for you tonight. Okay, and council members have questions for Jordan. I have a question. Could you say again how many is on the roster and how many are going to resign? There are five on the roster currently with two that have indicated that they will resign within the next couple of months. And how many need seats? If, they were, we, if we were full, what's the full amount of the roster? Eleven. Eleven. Wow. So... What happens as far as, because they're the ones who, when it comes to looking for funding for nonprofits and all that, and well, do we have to put a freeze on that? So I'm going to pass that question over to Teresa Wilson, our finance director, who can speak a little bit more to the grant programs. Um, I don't want to misspeak and say that the nonprofits have already been provided for. Yep. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, the status of current efforts of QCF are that during the March board meeting, members had already scored and discussed and made funding decisions for nonprofit grants. So those checks have already been written and mailed to the nonprofits that those were awarded to. And during the April meeting at the on the fourth Tuesday of this month, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, we will be making funding decisions for the scholarships. So that will happen with the existing five board members and not have any delays or okay. issues with, with those current processes. And staff members behind the scenes are working with PRG staff as well as police department staff on all of the preparation involved in the golf tournament at the end of August. So that's exciting work that's underway as well. Right. Does that answer your question? I guess we're okay for now, but what does that look like for the third and fourth quarter? Absolutely. Um, the, the big fundraising lift for QCF throughout the entire year is, is partnering with city departments on the golf tournament. And I'm confident that that will go as well as it has the last three years due to all the staff involved behind the scenes as well. Um, regardless of the QCF membership. But then as we get further into the year, if QCF is too low in numbers to function legally as a board, um, routing the funding through QCF for future awards might become problematic. Um, so hopefully the interviews this weekend go really well and we can get some new board members appointed to join us. We have a great group of five. We just need some more. So. Hopefully that helps. Okay, thank you. Council Member Kim. Thank you, uh, Mr. Roberts. So I think what I wanna think about is advertising and wondering what that has currently looked like. Um, is there potential for not so much just word on a chalkboard, right? I mean, more so just to kind of, kind of uh, show visualization as to what the QCF has done. I mean, I. Can you, well, before I get too too deep in the weeds here, I just want to know what have you guys done as far as for advertising to try to get people into the foundation? 
So community relations is the one that handles kind of pushing out that collateral. We'll do things from social media posts, connected newsletter, um, and kind of like posting it on the city's website in the vacancy list as well. Um, we can certainly start to carve out some kind of singular QCF post and really start to do a concerted effort over the next couple months to try to get uh, some more applicants in there. And again, like I said, the clerk's office will be willing to facilitate interviews even on those offhand uh, outside of normal quarterly interviews. Yeah, I think uh, I'd probably look more towards like as far as more visualizations, uh, just kind of visualize and say, here's what QCF has done in the past year. Here's what we've raised. Uh, we're definitely looking for more board members in that aspect. Mr. Rogers, did you have a question? I was going to defer to talk more about the, uh, the, the advertising, the marketing of QCF um, to applicants. I believe we have Travis Huntington online um, is my understanding. We do. Uh, we can speak towards that, towards those efforts. Travis. I just sent him the uh, link. He should don't, be joining us now. Don't worry about it. Disregard that. It's okay. I just wanted to know as far as what we have done, as far as from an advertising standpoint, and I think more so just the aspect of trying to figure out maybe there's some type of um, not so much, like I said, you know, don't, don't just make it a huge paragraph for somebody to read. Right. I mean, just more so just kind of like a, uh, a like a, uh, like a pop art almost type of visualization to show here's what QCF has done. QCF has done in the first quarter. Here's what they've done last year. Here's who, here's who they've impacted. Why don't you join with us? Um, I think from my, my standpoint, obviously off of my platform as well, I'd be happy to go in and try to help. Uh, you know, advertise as much as I could and obviously um, direct them over to you if they have any questions. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you. That's all I, I got. You can hear me, but Travis Rodney didn't hear. Yeah, thank you. Uh, appreciate the suggestion there, Councilmember Kim. Absolutely, we can, uh, I think, implement some new methods for promoting QCF and uh, the benefits of what that body does for the city and for the community. So I think we can absolutely up our game there in terms of uh, the promotional aspects of that. And those are the kind of things I think that we could also expand our reach a little bit and identify some new tools um, to hopefully get that recruitment a little more successful going forward. Sounds good. Thank you, Travis. And I think uh, Marina would be a great person for that because I know she's very creative and artsy as it is. Shout out to Marina. <laughs> We're good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Do any uh, council members have administrative business items or emerge of an emergency or unforeseen circumstances? Councilmember Kim. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I've got two. Uh, so back on uh, April second, I've asked Mr. Rogers to please send this out to the rest of council. This is regarding the uh, the 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 cross crosswalk area um, from Eagle Point to go across on from Eagle Point on Parkway Drive to get over to the other side. There is currently no no form of uh, pedestrian crossing, uh, as as I know that area is pretty much like a major busy uh, roadway. So my uh, and I know the email traffic that we received is that the rough estimate between 80 and 100 K considering as and it's also considered part of the 2025 SIP project uh, project unless staff is able to identify other funding uh, construction. So with that said, what I'd like to do is make my motion to, to basically say that um, Either it is part of the 2025 SIP project, uh, you know, SIP project requests, or if staff is able to identify funding sooner to basically make, uh, basically make that uh, that that crosswalk into into ex into fruition. Just for point of clarification, just to make sure I heard it cl uh, clearly, um, your motion is for. Uh, staff to consider and potentially present to the city council um, a 2025 CIP project um, that could be adopted, a uh, identification of, an, of a funding source or construction method in advance of that, that would be able to deliver that crosswalk across Parkway adjacent to Eagle Point. Correct. So it's more so whether it's 
we have the funding source to have it up sooner or it gets added on to the 2025 SIP. That is my motion. Councilmember Douglas. I'll second that. Got a first and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion carries five, one, uh, three absences. I wouldn't. Four, one. What I count, I mean, he didn't vote, so just five. And one ex extension. One abstention. Abstention. It would be five, one, three. Yes. Five zero one. Playing three. tennis here. All right, thank Point you. Excused. And your second. My my second one is is regarding um, the current project for Murray Farms. Murray Farms is the one that is that lot that is located off of uh, close by 112th and Highway 85. Um, my my motion is to request to have that called up when. Uh, when it is, um, like request I called up as a public hearing when that is suitable. I don't know the, um, I don't have the case number in front of me. My apologies. So we have uh, a number of different applications for Murray Farms that are currently in the process. Uh, we have a final plat subdivision uh, which is S-821-24, uh, which is to create four lots and eight tracks. Uh, I'm looking at our website, pulling this up. So it can, if you all want to give reference, it's on our subdivision case project page. Um, we have final another final plat, which is S-821-22-24. Uh, we have an associated development plan. The development plans are, um, they do not have the ability to be called up by council. Only the community development director um, at his professional leisure can push that up um, based on certain criteria. Uh, and then they have two zone change applications before um, uh, the staff for review that ultimately will make its way through planning commission and city council. So you have the ability to call up potentially two plats. Uh, one is uh, for four lots, eight, excuse me, eight tracks into four lots, and one that is associated with uh, a development plan for a multifamily development. You mentioned the second one being S821-22-24. What was the first one that you mentioned? S-821-24, but that I'm recognizing that those are the same numbers. So I'm looking to Mr. Gerber to confirm for me um, the correct number. So I do see the S-821-22-24. It's the final plot of 13.07 acres from a track to a lot, southeast corner of East 112th Avenue and Lima Street. Yes, sir. And I'm looking for the other one for you. And you had mentioned that there's a uh, there's a rezoning that's occurring that will come before city council at some point in the future. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. There are two rezonings that will come before city council uh, for some consideration in action. Thank you. 
So are you looking to call both subdivision plats? Yes, sir. So I think you can make a motion because obviously we have two on file. Um, that if you want for council to have that be brought through the public hearing process, I think we have enough direction based off of the two plats that are filed with respect to that to be brought to through the planning commission and city council. Can I just mention Murray Farms then itself, or do I need to go in and contact? Do I need to identify the case number? I think you can say Murray Farms and the two, the two plats. Copy that. So my motion is to go ahead and uh, request for the public hearing process that we bring forward the, the Murray Farms uh, project with the two plats. For council review. For council review, sorry. Second. Got a motion on the floor made by Councilmember Kim and seconded by Councilmember Chacon. Any discussion? Councilmember Ford? Yeah, just a question. Um, what is the purpose to bring them up? Good question. Uh, so the I've received a lot of um, concerns from residents with regards to that entire um, lot and the build out of that lot. Um, as far as the location where it's at, the, the traffic that would be, uh, that, that'd be potentially an issue. Uh, and so looking at it myself, you know, it is of my opinion that, um, that I think there is some concerns there that we need to ensure that we are doing our due diligence to ensure that it is, um, that the concerns that have been, um, that the residents mainly have had has been addressed. So there, there, you know, when I look at it, you know, I see that there is um, the, you know, we've got Highway 85 next to 112, which is a two lane road. And plus you've got the railroad tracks that sits right next to it too. So there's, you know, and, and just to get out of that area alone um, to get on to 85, I mean, you could, you can run through four or five different light cycles, uh, in the, especially in the morning. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, we have done our due, due, due diligence to ensure that whether it's the apartment complex that's being built out there or the single detached homes that are being built out there, whatever the case is, that we are doing our part to ensure that all of the access points um, have been identified and like any of the traffic issues have actually been addressed. That's my only, that's the reason. Thank you. Yeah, I, I live right there and uh, just was curious what, why, why bringing it forward, but I'm fine with that. Okay, any other questions? All right, got a first. Mayor Douglas? Council member, yes. Council member Chacon has her um, okay. hand raised. All right, sorry about that. Thank you. Honestly, Council Member Kim um, summed it up pretty much um, from the main points I was going to say. I've been receiving emails um, for a while about Marine Farms, and it is because of traffic density, exactly the rail yards where our railroad were already having issues as it is for the hour delay, for the blockage, and then to add such a, honestly, making it more of a bedroom community and then more of just housing density, I would really be concerned about it even have the infrastructure, especially in transportation, to be able to hold that space. And then communities are concerned about what does that also bring here. They were asking for more commercialization, but, but this isn't what they were looking for. Thank you. Council Member Douglas. Thank you. Council Member Kim, I want to thank you for bringing this forward. I have been contacted by plenty of um, residents in that area, they do, they are very concerned. And I think they're, you know, they need to be, those concerns need to be heard and addressed. So thank you for bringing this forward and I will be supporting this. Thank you. Yes, and I'd like to say that I've talked to some of the firefighters in the building over there and they're concerned about the project as well, along with community members and be nice to 
have this come forward so there is talk around this to see exactly how this how this uh, will shape out for the neighborhood and what the needs are. So I will be in support of this as well. Thank you. All right, any other discussions? Okay, we got a first and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. Yeah, it passes six to three. All right, any other council members have any council business? Uh, I have one, just didn't know if I have to recognize this. Uh, beginning of the year, I had uh, let council know I was accepted for the transportation infrastructure for National League of Cities. You had to meet in the fall, which we already had a fall meeting. We're gonna, I'm sorry, or yeah, or fall meeting, then we're gonna have a winter meeting. And there's a summer meeting you have to attend as well. And then I'm also on the race equity and leadership, which is uh, real. And just wanna notify council that um, there is this summer session in uh, California. And um, if I have to give a, approval for that, is that correct, council, uh, city manager Rogers or Or is that noted because it's part of our boards and commissions back in December? I don't have the relevant policy in front of you, but there are certain occasions where if it is a unplanned trip or if it is within a certain time period that you would see simply the support from the rest of your council um, on, on being able to, to, to make that conference, to make that trip, to make yeah. that training. Um, I think um, what you're doing today is out of abundance of, of just caution to the policy, um, given that you're saying that this is within the summer months. Um, so I, I think you are covering both of your bases, but I don't think there's anything relative to right now um, uh, that would require you to do such. But I think it helps nonetheless um, for a point for us to point back to when thinking about squaring up invoices and, and, and travel and things around yeah. travel. All right. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Councilmember Douglas. Um, I just said, uh, since uh, the mayor brought that up, I'm just going to let everyone know that I would like to attend the summer session as well as I have, um, I am on the, uh, um, Energy Environment and National Resources Committee, as well as the real for race and equity. So um, since it was brought up, I just thought I'd say something about it as well. Okay. All right, going to reports. City Manager Rogers, weekly report. I will keep this extremely quick. Um, the city's been awarded 1.9 million in highway safety improvement program grant funds for the highway Two median improvement project, which um, is currently under design. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my hotshot crew over the, for the past year. Uh, the team has collected 280 tons of material and abandoned items throughout our city. Uh, that is the equivalent of 40 average adult African elephants that you might see at the zoo. So that's a lot of work. That's a lot of tonnage. Um, so I got to give a shout out to the guys and to the team uh, and the mams that do all of that hard work for us. Um, uh, PD is doing a forthcoming special enforcement operations. Um, uh, with, that include motor carrier safety for a move over operation to remind motors of their legal obligation to move over for emergency vehicles and an unregistered expired registration education and enforcement campaign. Um, we've also have re learned that we've received uh, a grant uh, in the amount of $5,000 from Walmart Sparks local grant, uh, which will help us with community engagement efforts this year. Um, and we will also continue, uh, we participate, excuse me, in the polar plunge over the weekend uh, to raise money for the Special Olympics. Okay, thank you. City Attorney Sarzaki, please provide your weekly report. 
Nothing to report. Thank you. All right. Do any other council members have report they'd like to make? And I need to remind you, please limit your report to five minutes per council policy 16. No council members reports? All right. Let's see. Council member Douglas. Thank you. Uh, Thank so you. Can't see the been pretty busy again. I just wanted to um, really kind of showcase uh, the Adams 14 school district. They had their arms around Adams talent show and it was really incredible. Uh, great turnout. I had to leave for part of it and went to the youth commission meeting and that was a, a really good meeting. Um, then uh, the following night I went to the um, uh, Adams 14 Board of Education meeting and it was really special because uh, they got accreditation from Cognia, which is an international um, education organization uh, that awards accreditation. And so that was very special to be there, especially after um, what they've gone through as far as t having the state take their accreditation away twice, um, trying to um, do everything they possibly could to, to shut the district down. And uh, then the state review panel came out and past that with flying colors. So everything that was uh, the state review panel uh, that came out two years ago, uh, the uh, this state review panel overturned everything. So it's a, a very special week for Adams 14. Um, let's see. I'm just going to leave it at that and let the rest go. We think, oh, they, oh, they also had a, um, Adams 14 also had a pep rally, um, uh, and the, the gym was packed and that was where they, the students learned that they, they got the, uh, Cognia accreditation. So I'm just going to leave it at that and, um, Congratulations to Adams 14 for all of their persevering hard work that they put into um, saving a very important part of our community for our community. Thank you, Council Member Ford. Thanks, Mayor. Because uh, we have a council policy that says if you talk to anybody that's in the development community in our community, you have to uh, let the council know. I did talk to Devinder Sandu, uh, who um, was having some issues about still with his development, directed him to talk to uh, our staff as well as to um, talk to the, uh, the water department about his concerns. I also talked to Mark Bush, who um, is developing and trying to improve the road on 120th. He said that he had trouble um, with the water district not having as built for the water lines, which is going to change some of the costs for his project and wanted to know if I knew where he could find the as built I gave him information on the two engineering companies that would have done the design work and done the as builts for South Adams at the time. Also, it was a joint project with Commerce City when we did our detention pond on 120th at the time E-470 was being built and that he could check with the city to see if they may have those as builts um, as well. And there is another uh, gentleman that called me today that owns a gas station in Commerce City. I believe his name is Manjeet. And he wants to uh, talk to me tomorrow about uh, the process of what he would have to do 
to um, try to get a car wash uh, development um, on his property next to his gas station. And so just out of transparency, I want to let you all know, I talk to those people. I mean, they call me all the time just because they know me and have for many years. And uh, those are the discussions that I've had. Thank you. Thank you, Casper Ford. Council Member Teeter. I just wanted to report on uh, E-470 has finally got an executive director on board, or I guess we're waiting for him to approve the contract, but he's we, we did pick one last week. Thank That's you. All I got. Appreciate that. Council Member Kim. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Just two things. Um, so first and foremost, I did meet with Suncor uh, back on April 5th. It was with uh, uh, Leisha Burnett, who's a manager for government external relations, and also Jeff Krav, Krav, Kravy, uh, the vice president for the refinery. Um, I will say that I think the conversation was very fruitful and understanding, understanding they um, they have, well, they, they say that they have made some strides um, from what we saw with, um, with issues that happened during the first quarter of 2023 into, into this year, um, as far as the, uh, um, the, I think the flares is what he was referring to. Um, the understanding that I had from him based on the conversation was that he needed to, uh, him and his team needed to go ahead and, uh, um, kind of just gather and consolidate the notes together to determine as far as what would be the appropriate next step. I told him, I said, you know, honestly, the next appropriate step would be to actually come before, um, whether it's a town hall forum, not with a list of devised questions or whatever the case is, but more so just to hear out the community, but also hear out, um, also provide what, uh, what has he done since he's actually, since Jeff has taken over the refinery um, about, what, eight, nine months ago. Um, you know, he did make mention that there was some, you know, Suncor in the in the past used to be very uh, hesitant on, uh, you know, passing out information. So obviously if you don't pass out information, then, you know, there's a lot of, a, a lot to be said with that, but they are starting to become, they are attempting to become a little bit more um, transparent, more open uh, as to their issues that they have. But, uh, you know, uh, actions do speak louder than words, and I do hope that you know they do. They do uh, end up going with a town hall forum to basically allow others to speak and uh, and also to to hear them out, and answer questions on the fly. The other thing I've got is a Memorial Day parade. I won't I won't ruin it for Travis or anybody else. We did have a band that was selected, and also and I believe we also have a a grand marshal as well uh, for the city. Um, I will wait till Travis and his team actually gets that communication out there. But uh, that's all I've got to report. Thank you. Thank you. Got time. All right. Thank you. Yes, um, I also attended the Arms Around Adams 14 uh, talent show. It was uh, great to uh, see the talent we have in Adams 14. Uh, their MC didn't show, so they asked me to come up up and um, just introduce myself as the new mayor. Uh, had a meeting with North Metro mayors, talked about RTD and the changes that are could happen. Had a a one on well a stand up meeting today with um, City Manager Rogers uh, around House Bill uh, 1447 that deals with the transformation bill. We're gonna, it's being introduced and most likely will be passed. We're gonna re reduce the size of RTD from 15 directors down to eight, which five would be uh, voted on by the residents in the Jim Rancher area. And the other two would be appointed by the governor. And I think one would be, uh, I'm trying to think the other one is supposed to be, I think there's just seven, is it seven or eight? Uh, seven, um, seven voting, three non-officio, um, uh, in a capacity. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. And then also 
went to the rally for Adams 14 school district talking about uh, the earn as far as uh, cognia and accreditation. So not only did they get their cognia accreditation, but it's an international uh, recognition to provide uh, the school is be more of an international accreditation for Adams County, I'm sorry, for Adams 14 across the nation and globally as a district that meets cognitive performance standards and maintain a commitment to continuous improvement. And I can tell you, but living in Commerce City for 20 years now, Adams, Adams 14 has had a target on their back for 15 years. They've been hit at every angle to actually uh, put those kids in a, in, uh, in a pigeonhole. And it's hard when you're going through the process of learning and you know the only route you have is through that school district because where you live, you don't, you lack transportation. And so that's why the focus has been to make sure Adams 14 can come out of their situation, uh, reassuring the students and the parents that not only, not only are they uh, put your accreditation back into the school, but they continue that. They really uh, advertise and, and advocate for uh, bilingual and not shying away from it. Before, if you were a student, you could use your Spanish from kindergarten to, three, to uh, third grade, and after that, all, all English. Now it's going to be bilingual, which is great. And uh, I think they're, they're moving in in the right direction. And they also appreciate the fact that uh, Commerce City support. We both, we do support 27J as well, but M14 want me to let, let everyone know here, everyone here on council that they appreciate the support that the council and the city has been behind them on all avenues. So that's my report. Thank you. Seeing, oh, council member Douglas. Just one more thing. Um, there's probably going to be a memorial walk for Kara Kincaid, who lost her life um, last year, April 11th. Um, she was hit by a hit and run driver who um, could never pay the price that that uh, he. <laughs> Uh, I it just is it's beyond words how all of this came about, but I want everybody to to remember Kara and um, when that walk comes up, I would really um, encourage everyone to participate and and show your support uh, for this Commerce City family who. Uh, who lost their their young daughter. And uh, I think it's really important that we remember. So I just wanted to bring that up quickly. Um, be on the lookout for that. Thank you. Council Member Kim. Uh, one last thing I forgot to report. So there is a Chamber of Commerce mixer for city council members who can attend on, on I believe it's Wednesday the 24th is what I saw. Um, from 5.30 to 7. I think I'll, I'll definitely be there supporting that. Um, so if any other council members here or on virtual uh, can attend, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, I'll have to state that I did attend the uh, uh, Commerce City Chambers meeting as a guest. That was Thursday night. Yeah. Thank you. All right, seeing no other, no other business, I will ask for a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Councilmember Douglas. So moved. Councilmember Kim. Second. First and second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, those opposed say nay. Nay. <laughs> motion passes.